the reason why you would say that like, oh, well, if you're a socialist, like that doesn't necessarily mean you have to live by your ideals is because when people say that, they're talking about like bricklayers that are making like $15,000 a year. Those are the people that can't afford to live by socialist ideals because they're not only like a part of the system, they are literally enslaved to the system and are being actively destroyed by the system. It's so funny because Republicans have all these poor, stupid, white, redneck f around here, like defending these like racist ideas to defend like capitalist owners and shit. And they're tools, like poor white people are tools of wealthy Republicans. However, you poor dumb f people on the left are just as much tools by the rich f***ing socialists online that do nothing with their money to live any of their ideals as well. Like, you've got these people online now on the left, like f people like Sean and Jen that make two videos a year that are collecting over 10,000 quid a month um, on their f***ing Patreon for doing no f work or these other big left-leaning content creators that are making well over seven figures a year that do nothing with their money to help their cause right and what's their excuse like oh well i live in a society dude mother you don't live in a society you thrive in the society are there any aspects of the ussr or china whether economic social or political that you consider desirable or well worthy of replication in the u.s um <clears throat> so there's like there's a couple of huge problems one is that my history sucks um, and then two is it's really hard to disentangle the like positive effects of one system versus like the positive effects of another. Um, so for instance, like I've seen people argue back and forth on like, well, you know, um, <clears throat> uh, socialism or whatever version of socialism you'd say the uh, USSR or China implemented was, you know, at least it helped the country in some ways. And then I've heard other people say like, oh, well, um, you know, like industrialization period is going to help any of these countries. Of course, it doesn't matter what economic system they've had. Um, I know um, I got a guy in my chat that links me a ton of studies and shit. Um, Rage Pope. I don't know if anyone's heard of him, but um, like supposedly the uh, regardless of industrialization, the USSR and China were behind where they should have been compared to other capitalist countries. And then other people argue that that's because of World War Two, blah, blah, blah. So I, I don't know. I, I, I wish I had like a better answer, but like that shit is so complicated. I'm not entirely sure. Um, and then you also have to take you, you also have to like look at like the difference between like the ideals of the USSR and of Mao's China versus like the in practice what happened. Um, yeah, I, I think right now, I think the United States has enough it can copy from modern countries that I don't think I would look into the past to try to find things that we should copy. Like, for instance, like healthcare or time off or different redistribution of wealth systems that like uh, like other Western European countries have are probably things that the U.S. could look to copy rather than trying to go back to the, you know, 50s, 60s, 70s to figure out, you know, what was China and Russia doing at the time? Because it. Yeah. OK, fair enough. Um... Moving on to a bit of a different note, um, Noam Chomsky Gaming asks, what measures should we take to prevent another person like Trump from taking power? Should we ban parties which attempt to subvert democracy or try to destroy democratic norms? I kind of think you have to just run it. I think that you just have to let the system do what the system does. I mean, I, I don't... It sounds weird, but technically we kind of have to be okay with somebody like Trump, I think, taking power because, I mean, like that's how your system works. I mean, he was voted in. Um... I think that um, I, I think that if you're looking to fight against stuff like that, but you still want to remain kind of like um, loyal to the ideas of like liberalism and democracy, your best bet is probably actually to just get more people to vote. In in my opinion. Um, so there, there's like there's the small dumb things like getting rid of like uh, gerrymandering and, and resisting voter suppression and blah, 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 blah. But I think there are bigger things we could do. Like in Australia, you're required to vote. I, I actually I'm 100 percent like red pilled on the idea that voting should be a requirement. I think that if you change, if you can change the, the number of people that are engaged in our system by, by forcing people to vote, I think that you would have a radically different type of legislature and head of state at every election cycle. That's my opinion. So, yeah, I mean, if, you, if you're somebody that wants to, like, oh, like, I'm, people like Trump scare me, but I don't want to become, like, an authoritarian to prevent somebody like Trump from ever coming up again, I think that the more people you have voting, the, the less likely it is that Republicans are going to win elections. So that should be the thing you focus on. Because, I mean, if you look at, like, election strategy, it seems like Republicans, their strategy, like, almost principally revolves around, like, reducing the amount of turnout as much as possible, changing election days to weird days, not giving it, like, not making it, like, a, a federal holiday or whatever where everybody gets a day off, um, you know, resisting, like, mail-in and absentee voting, so, yeah. Okay. Um... Our uh, next question comes from Tan. It's kind of staying on that note of um, Trump and kind of um, Republican, Republican kind of tendencies. And they ask, in the post-Trump era, what do you think is the direction that Republican Party will take? Um, do you think they will keep the populist rhetoric or will they return? Um, the entire world is waiting on that answer. I don't have an answer. I have no idea. I, I have. I'm so curious. Like, there's like two or three huge paths that the Republican can take. Um, one is 
every new Trump, every new statesman becomes like a Trump light person where everybody wants to kind of emulate his rhetoric to, to ride on the wave of the immense popularity that he enjoyed under his administration, despite his relatively lackluster rule. Um, the second thing is maybe Republicans are like, ah, fuck it. We're going to go back to being, uh, you know, neocons. We're going to go back to being, you know, Bush era Republicans. And then you just never hear about that Trump stuff again. The few that support him eventually are voted out. And then you just go back to kind of the normal Republican Party. Um, or... Um, or maybe the, the maybe the Republican Party tears itself apart and you see all of these old people um, go back to uh, like a whole new party. You, you've got like Trump talked about forming the Patriot Party. You already have kind of an incompatibility right now with um, with a lot of the Trumpish Republicans and then the establishment Republicans. Um, so, yeah, I'm not I don't know. I, I'm super curious. But okay. like so is the rest of the world. Yeah, I, I wish I had a better answer. But yeah. <laughs> um. Our next question comes from Whiskey, and they want to know, do you think Biden will fulfill his promise to pass the Equality Act in his first 100 days in office? Uh, I have no idea. Um, he's already been pretty bold with all of the um, EAs and EOs going out, but um, in terms of like what will he actually get done, I'm not sure. I also don't know how much of this hangs off of like the impeachment in the Senate, but, like what that process is going to entail as well. So. All right. Um, our next question comes from Whiskey again, staying on that topic of Biden, um, and they ask, do you see Biden's election as America veering left, or is America rejecting Trump's populism? Um, so populism can be left or right, is my understanding of it. Um, it, it, it. So the question was, is Biden making the country veer left, or...? Um, yeah, whether you think um, Biden's election is a sign of America veering left, um, or a rejection of Trump's populism. Uh, oh, um, dude, I don't know, man. This country like swings like super hardcore in terms of um, where we were at politically and then where we're at now. Um, I don't know if that's actually healthy. <laughs> um, I, I think that we'll know a lot more after... Um, I think we'll know a lot more after Biden's term or in the next two years, I guess, what happens. Because like we just swung from like an all right legislature on both halves and a Supreme Court to now we have like an all left legislature on both halves and now a left leaning president. Um, I, I don't know where the fuck we go to this. Americans are bipolar as fuck when it comes to their political leanings, I guess. I, I guess it'll be it'll depend on how Biden's how Biden's two years go. OK, um, and staying on that topic of kind of uh, Democrats. Um, Snowy Mustrat wants to know, out of the 20 Demo 2020 Democrats who ran for president, who are your top three in which you would pick based on policy and electability, and who are your top three based on policy alone? On policy and electability, um, well, for if we're factoring in electability, I just have to go with the most popular ones, right? I believe that Biden was number one. Obviously, he won. Um, two and three are really hard because all of the moderates kind of like coalesced into the Biden vote. Um, it seems like the the obvious answer to number two would be Bernie, but it feels like Bernie had a hard time overcoming that like thirty percent hump. Um, so I may, I don't know, man. I I, I want to say like I want to say like Warren slash Bernie for two and three maybe. Um, if I had to if I had to guess, but I, I don't hold me to that. In terms of just like policy and electability, um, in terms of policy alone. I think I actually liked Pete's approach to policy generally, although going, I don't know if this kind of selectability, but like Pete is really young, so it's hard to know how much he could actually get done. And for the little bit of time he did spend in office, he has not handled um, his administration's like big ordeals as well as he could have, you know, the whole police chief um, firing and everything. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. I, yeah, I don't know. It's hard to say. Um, I, I'm a big fan of like I'm a big fan of taking a left-leaning approach to things But like I feel like a lot of people way off to the left are a little bit delusional when it comes to economic policy So like I, I love Bernie to death and I admire how far left he wanted to push things But I'm not like a massive protectionist and I don't think that we can have like infinite money printers for the country um, Although Republicans definitely hype up how bad deficits are and everything um, So yeah, I think I think I appreciate like kind of like a more pragmatic approach kind of like I guess Pete kind of talked about, although I don't know how much he would have actually enacted of that, but yeah, so I, I'll kind of yeah, be there, I guess. Okay. Um, and moving on from kind of the uh, electoral politics onto more international relations focused questions, um, Tan wants to know, do you think the US will maintain its role as the central geopolitical actor in the 21st century, or will the mantle be passed over to China? 
Um, I mean, China wants it, although I think they probably still have some progress to make. Um, this is like a very broad general question. It's again, it's really it's a hard question. It's fuck. Um, my, my kind of like my thoughts are, um, I feel like the faster Africa comes online and, and everything like starts rolling with that continent, I feel like the quicker that happens, the more powerful China will become because they've invested so much more on that continent than the United States has. Um, so maybe maybe China becoming like kind of like the new like head order of the world actually revolves around Africa more than anything going on in, in Europe or Asia. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, obviously, the United States wants to hold on to its position. Biden is obviously trying to make strides back in that direction. Um, uh, whether or not the United States can hold on. I mean, I don't, obviously it seems like it's either going to be the U S or China, right? It doesn't seem like there's a European country that's going to step up and do it. Maybe if the EU had it shit together more, the EU as a body could, but yeah, I, yeah, that's a, that's a big, we'll see, I guess. Okay. Um, and moving on from that topic entirely, Natsuki Marks wants to know, what are your thoughts on neo pronouns? Um, I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of them. Okay. I don't mind using they them, but neo pronouns start to get a little bit silly to me. Like at like the whole point, I, the whole point of a pronoun is that you have kind of like a general way to re refer to something, right? Like that's what a pronoun is, as opposed to a proper noun that actually refers to a place. Like I ran into people that have unique neo pronouns, and at that point, aren't they? Aren't those just proper nouns? Like you're literally making a name for something. I, I don't know. I, I'm not a big fan of it. It seems kind of silly to me, but uh, maybe my opinion. Maybe I'll change on that in the next few years. Who knows? Okay. Um, our next question comes from Rockpile, and they want to know what politically slash philosophically focused books have you read that you would recommend? What politically slash philosophically focused book? Fuck reading books. Um, honest to God, I should read more, but I don't because I'm a lazy piece of shit and I stream too much. Um, <clears throat> in, in terms of like recent stuff I've read, like the the only thing I can think of is um, uh, there's a book called Lying About Hitler. If you ever want to argue with a uh, Holocaust denier, it gives a really interesting perspective on like proving that the Holocaust happened. Um, that's probably the most oh and then another oh i guess something a little bit more recent um there's a book by eaton hurst i think is his name it's called politics is for power and that's a very interesting book on how to have like a little bit more of an applied approach in real life to uh, main, uh acquiring political power rather than um rather than just like screaming at each other on the internet i think yeah okay wait um, can i say something real quick yep Okay, just as I see people mentioning this in the in the AMA chat, the idea that the American Overton window is so much further to the right than than in Europe is absolute fucking delusional fantasy. And I don't know where this meme started from or who spreads these memes around that like Bernie Sanders would be a centrist in Europe. It is absolutely not true. It is the dumbest fucking comment I've ever heard in my entire life. Like on some ends, the United States is very center compared to the rest of Europe or right even when it comes to economic policy. Like we don't do paid time off. We don't have fucking return to leave our health care doesn't exist but on the other hand if you were to take like our immigration policy to most european countries they would fucking lose their fucking minds um like like america is definitely like a bit more right-leaning than a lot of european countries but the idea that like all of our most left-leaning candidates would just be centrist in europe this is an idea that is so stupid it could only come from other americans or europeans that spend too much time on the american internet all right sorry okay go ahead okay um and now i know you kind of said your history wasn't that great earlier um, but hopefully this is an easier question. Um, MU57Y wants to know, who is your favorite 20th century US president? Who is my... Dude, I, I have no fucking idea. <laughs> I'm not even going to pretend to try to answer that. Um, I'll say Obama because you know what? Hell yeah, because that was uh, a guy that I remember. And uh, yeah, that's all, I, that's all I could say about that. Okay. Um, our next question comes from UU Fred, and they want to know... What changes would you like to see in criminal justice policy in the USA? Um, changes in criminal justice policy. I think that our criminal justice focus is way too much on retribution versus like rehabilitation. So like things that could reduce the, um, uh, is it recidivization? I think is what I'm looking for. The recidivization rate, um, the, like how much people reoffend, and things that integrate people into society better. I think would be vastly superior policies to like very weird like three strike rules and shit we have. Um, that's like one small thing. The, like the biggest critique I have of like U.S. Um, 
like jails or, or pr the prison system, I guess, uh, probably comes more um, from like how we do drugs. I think that we waste a lot of prison space. I think we waste a lot of police manpower. I think we waste a lot of courtroom time um, prosecuting people for drug related charges. And I think almost all of that needs to go away. So my, my chief criticism is probably going to rest like in the in the um, the DEA, the Drug Enforcement Agency, on the way that they do scheduling on drugs. Um, the whole war on drugs has been like atrocious. And I think getting rid of that concept would go like a really far way in improving so many different like areas of the United States. Okay, good answer. Um, our next question comes from Maximus, and they want to know, how did your mum react to the recent riots? Does she disavow Trump now? No, my mom's on board with the, they were Antifa people. Okay. Um, our next question comes from PMC, and they want to know, do you think Julian Assange should be pardoned? Fuck Assange. <laughs> Not in the U.S. If they want to pardon him somewhere else, sure, but I don't like Assange. Um, he's just, he's like a propaganda fuck that hates the U.S. Like, fuck that guy. Um, yeah, there are better arguments to be made for somebody like Snowden than somebody like Assange. Okay. Um, our next question comes from the CEO of Cybernetics, and they want to know, broadly speaking, what is your opinion on social democracies such as Norway or Finland? Uh, I mean, they seem based. Does anybody think different? Um, all right, uh, so moving on from that, um, Tan wants to know, going forward, do you see political extremism from the left or the right to be a greater threat? Um, I don't know. That's a hard one. I'm not sure. Um, it, it feels like from the right is generally more damaging because it tends to be more racialized and it tends to like aim itself negatively uh, against a lot of society in ways that can, I think, demonstrably harm society. Um, so for instance, economically, I think that right-leaning tax policy is very, very, very bad and their reluctance to like engage in more redistributive models probably hurts a lot of people. Um, in terms of social policy, like I think that generally the social agenda is usually pretty bad. So being like anti-abortion, uh, being like anti-LGBT rights, you know, Trump trying to strip rights from trans people and whatnot. I think all of that is like pretty shitty. Um, yeah. And then, um, yeah. And I, like left, left leaning people haven't been in charge long enough to like really fuck shit up. But I mean, they could get there. Who knows? We'll see. I mean, if the Jimmy Doors and the Kyle Kalinskis, you know, were in charge of things, I'm sure I'd have a lot of negative shit to say about how they run things as well. So. All right. Um, and staying on that kind of topic of um, left to right divide, Snowy Mustrat wants to know, what do you have against lefties? It almost feels like you rail against them harder than the alt writers. Um, it's fine if you disagree with them, but it seems counterproductive to keep arguing with lefties when the conservatives actually threaten our democracy. Um, they just poison political discourse generally. Like most of them are very dumb. Um, most of their econ takes are very bad. Uh, most of them don't understand capitalism well enough to criticize it. Um, and then the worst part is that I end up looking bad because then when I go on shows or when I argue with conservatives, um, they try to make me defend like all of these ridiculously fucking brain dead lefty takes on like economic shit. And then it's just very frustrating for me. It makes my job harder. So um, when conservatives act stupid, that's good because it's part of the group that I'm attacking. When lefties act stupid, it's dumb because now I have to spend so much time differentiating myself from some dipshit that thinks that you know, I don't know that like the existence of billionaires is by default like a moral evil or some stupid shit or whatever crazy shit lefties are talking about at the time. Okay, um, and approaching from the other side of that issue, um, Blip wants to know, what is your opinion on the controversy surrounding right-wingers and social media platforms? Um, that's a, it's a really hard one. I don't have a good answer for this. It sucks, but like, um, how to, like, my personal standards for deplatforming um, are have always been I don't like misinformation. I think it poisons public discourse. I think it is the destroyer of anything that could ever be considered good under any type of moral framework or any type of like political analysis. Like I just don't see there being a benefit at all to people that just spread misinformation. Uh, but I think that comes from, I, I, unfortunately, I think that comes from all sides of the political aisle right now online. You're just inundated with so much incorrect shit that, um, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, I, I I don't know how you I don't know how you deal with that. My my like I said, I always said like oh like I think if you're my, the standard I set was like if you intentionally or with like blatant disregard are spreading misinformation online, you should just be like given a warning a few times and then banned if you don't stop. Um, but obviously, like people have different standards by which they measure misinformation. Like half the country thinks the fucking election was stolen, so I don't even know how you would go about enforcing that. Okay. Um... And then our next question comes from Mentally Ill Loner, and they want to know, 
You mentioned in the earlier streams that the problem with most right-wingers is not their IQ level, but the information they are subjected to. Any ideas on how to bridge the gap between reality and fantasy? Hmm. No, I mean, that's kind of piggybacks off the last question. I don't, I don't know. I wish I had a good answer. Like, oh, if we just do this thing, like, people won't be so delusional anymore. But, um... I, I, I don't have a good answer for it. I wish I did. Because if I did, I would talk about it and I'd push it all the time. I, I don't know how you stop people from being attracted towards, like, the more extreme viewpoints online that tend to be, like, highly uninformed. Alright, um... Randomizer wants to know, Biden has already seemed to be focused on expanding troops into Iraq and Syria. Do you think he has a plan to stop these wars or just keep the status quo? Um, is, fuck, I don't actually know in terms of, has he actually done that? Uh, I'm not completely sure, I'm just reading from the question. Fuck, I, um, I don't know anything he's done about foreign policy at the moment. Um, in reading what he's written about foreign policy, um, I seemed to align more with what he was saying versus, I don't know what the fuck Trump was saying. Um, but like, if we're deploying more troops to Syria, for instance, to protect, like, our allies, like, um, I think in Syria they're the YPG, those Kurdish people. Um, like, if, if that's the case, then, I mean, I, I'm probably okay with that, but, um... Yeah, I mean, I think in general, it's probably time for us to be done in that region, you know, respecting our allies and making sure that we're pulling out in a responsible way. All right. Um, our next question comes from Rel, and they want to know, what are your thoughts on affirmative action? Um, regulations to force diversity um, and race-based hiring quotas that many companies are adopting. I think that there are ways that affirmative action can be used in positive ways. I think there are ways it can be used in negative ways. Um, I, I think that like a, a negative way to do affirmative action is like we're going to hire 30% of our workforce so that they're black. I think that's kind of stupid. Um, but like I think there could be positive ways to do affirmative action. For instance, like we have a grant or something, you know, to have like a, you know, like a certain type of uh, like a certain job is opened up and in this job, you know, we're going to hire people because we're using money that we, I'm thinking more education actually. Like for, for a school, you might get a grant, you know, for you know, studies for like a certain people that you otherwise wouldn't normally have in the school because you wouldn't be able to afford it. But like special programs are made just for these types of people or something. It, like in those cases, I think I'm generally okay with it. Um, I, I feel like affirmative action should probably fall more like on the state or education side rather than forcing companies to do things. Um, because that feels a little bit kind of weird sometimes. Like I think in California, they just passed something recently where somebody on your board like has to be a woman. It's like a requirement. Um, I don't know. That just seems like it leads to a whole bunch of weird negative external things. But um, yeah. Okay. Um, Santino wants to know, what is the top policy you hope the Biden administration slash Democrats will pass? Um, uh, there's two parts to this. Is it like, um, in terms of like politically effective and good for like polling numbers or like stuff that would actually help the country? I think that we're well due past like time for having some sort of, um, some sort of like healthcare system. I think that's really, really important. I think the United States is like way far behind on that. Um, in terms of policies that would be like electorally popular, I think that's something along the lines of, uh, like the 15 an hour minimum wage. I'm not really sure how good that would be for the economy, but, um, that would probably be very electorally popular for Democrats and would probably ensure that they get like a lot of support from the public if they were to do that. But, um, so, some type of like national healthcare system I, I think is crucial at this point. All right. Um, Electron wants to know crisps, chips, or fries? Um, French fries, for sure. <laughs> um, Joseph McGee wants to know, do you think more extreme political opinions are more attributed to social media bubbles or inequality? Um, I mean, it, it, probably a little bit of both, right? Like, the thing that sucks about, like, extremism is it's never just one thing. Like, it's never just like, oh, if we just do this one thing, like, now the extremism is gone. Like, it's going to be a, uh, like, it's going to be a ton of different things that all come together, you know? Um, anytime you've got, like, high periods of inequality or political instability or problems with people, you know, like, eating or whatever, it's probably going to breed, you know, forms of extremism. And anytime you've got people that all kind of withdraw into their own little bubbles, it's going to probably breed forms of extremism. So, I mean, I'm sure all of this plays a role into making people more extreme. All right. Um... Our next question comes from Lil Bill. They want to know, what are your general thoughts on Biden's executive orders? Um, I didn't see the second days. Um, the first days seemed fine. Although at this point, I don't even remember them. Fuck. There were four big ones that they talked about in the first day. And I remember briefly going over them. Um, and I don't think I had any problems with them. I'd have to look them up again, though. I don't even remember at this point. 
All right. Um, our next question comes from Rorotan, and they want to know, if a legislator has a conflict of interest between their constituents and the wider country, which do you prefer they serve and why? Um, wait, I'm sorry, hold on. Say that one more time. Um, if a legislator has conflicts of interest um, between... Sorry, I'm just finding the question again. No, you're fine. Um, sorry, I was reading the second. chat. I fucked myself. So, right. Um... <laughs> oh, sorry. If a legislator has a conflict of interest between their constituents and the wider country, mm -hmm. which do you prefer they serve and why? Um, I think a politician's goal should always be to get reelected. So you should probably be serving your constituents and not the wider country. That would be my... That's how it probably should run. And I think that's probably what they would do. And I don't necessarily have a problem with that. All right. Um, our next question comes from Josh L, and they want to know what nation, if any, do you think utilizes capitalist economics more effectively than America? Um, fuck, was it? Were people saying that like Sweden was supposed to be like a really, really good place to start a business, or Norway? I know it was one of those like, um, I know it was one of the left-leaning um, Scandinavian countries because people are like, oh, it must be bad to start a like a, like a business there. Maybe it was even Denmark. Um, so I mean, like these places that have like high levels of capital investment that have businesses that start all the time, um, but still manage to take care of their poor people. I mean, it seems like they're probably applying capitalist principles a little bit better than the U.S. does. People in my chat right. are saying it was Denmark, so maybe Denmark. Okay. Um, our next question comes from Yitikus. They want to know, what do you think of Kanzuk? I don't know what Kanzik. Um, yeah, it's a trading deal, I believe, between Canada, New Zealand, uh, and the UK. Um, I mean, I like trading deals, so sounds based. I guess I don't. I don't know anything about it. Is it like a kind of like a mini NAFTA or something, or are there just some? Uh, I'm not completely sure on the details. To be honest, I'm just reading the question. Okay. Um, we'll just move on to the next one then. Gotcha. Um, our next question comes from Blip. They ask. Do you think that billionaires will leave the country if they feel like they are taxed too much? Wait, does... Hold on, wait, who asked that last question? Uh, the Kantuk one. Yeah. Uh, that was from Yitikus. Okay. I didn't get memed. It's not like, can Zuck can suck my dick or some shit, right? It's not like a... <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. No, it's a real thing. <laughs> okay, sorry. Okay, just making sure. Um... I'll repeat that question just then. Then um, Bl Blip wants to know, mm -hmm. do you think that billionaires will leave the country if they feel like they are taxed too much? Um, it's possible, although I don't know where they would go. Um, yeah, I'm not, I mean, you're not probably going to most European countries, right? Um, I think there are enough like international tax havens at this point that you don't really have to leave the US to shelter your income from taxes so I don't, I don't really see that happening but i mean if the taxes became too high at some point if it was preferential to be offshore with that money then i imagine people would probably do it it seems to make sense right but i mean like that's a complicated equation of you have to weigh like you know what are the benefits i get from staying here versus if i take my money somewhere else like even if i'm being taxed less can i still get the same return on it like yeah i'm sure that's a i'm sure that's some equation that like really wealthy people have kind of figured out like how high do the taxes have to go for me to go somewhere else you know all right um our next question comes from Etelex, and they want to know, what do you think is a good definition of fascism? Um, my understanding of fascism is that, like, fascism is, like, it, it, it has, like, a few parts to it. One typically involves some form of, like, ultranationalism um, that you, like, fucking love your country um, to the point that it's often racialized. Um, it's not just that you love your country, you love the people living in your country, and you love like a certain race of people living in your country. So my understanding is that fascism usually has like an ultra-nationalistic slash racialized aspect to it. And then it also has a degree of authoritarianism as well that has like a populist bent. So you have some sort of leader that's like, hey, listen, um, the world is fucked. Everybody's out to get you. I'm the only one that can help you. So you need to entrust me with all of your power, okay? Fuck political parties, um, you know, like fuck the process. Like I'm gonna do what I need to do to keep you guys safe and protect you from the evil outside. So, like, my understanding of fascism is that it, it has some form of, like, ultranationalism involved and then some form of, like, authoritarianism is involved. But uh, in today's common parlance, I, fascism is usually just somebody you don't like. <laughs> so, yeah. But that, that's my understanding of, like, what fascism technically refers to. But I'm sure there's also, like, 50 billion different definitions. Like, there is for socialism and communism and social democrat and neoliberal and, you know. 
Okay, um, and because there kind of seems to be a lot of discourse about this, especially on the left, would you say the Trump administration um, was uh, a fascist administration, or would you say it had, like, fascistic tendencies or anything else? Um, somehow, by the grace of God, maybe we're his chosen fucking people. I, I think that we tend... I think that America resisted the fascism, or at least our system did, surprisingly enough. Um, so I, I wouldn't say it was a fascist administration, but they definitely wanted to be. Um, Trump would definitely, I think, fashions himself to be quite the fascist, um, whether he knows that or not. Um, and I think a lot of the Republicans that supported Trump, whether they know it or not, probably would support a fascist. Like, I think for a lot of Republicans, I think that if I could sit across a Republican to describe like a, a style of leadership that was fascist, but I didn't call it fascist, I think they would agree with it. Um, yeah. Okay. Um... Our next question comes from Lou Max, and they want to know, on the abortion debate, what is your view on the fetus will grow into a child and therefore should be preserved argument? Um, I don't the I don't think that we generally take into account like future life that isn't life yet, because I think you run into like a lot of weird like philosophical conundrums if you do that. And also it just doesn't make sense to treat something like as it could in the future be i think that doesn't seem to make very much sense um so I, yeah so i i don't i don't um i, I don't really uh buy that argument yeah I, I i just i don't see a reason why should you value something that doesn't quite exist yet okay um our next question comes from sushi and they want to know do you agree with Biden's plan to increase the federal minimum wage to $15 an hour? Um, from an optics point, absolutely. I think it makes the Democratic Party look really good. I think there's a lot of people in the U.S. that would see like a direct benefit from that, so they'd have more favorable views of it, which would subsequently increase the chances of another Democrat getting elected. Um, from an e econ policy, 15 an hour just sounds way too high. Um, it's 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 just way too high across the entire country. I think there are certain sectors or, or certain parts of the country that could probably support 15 an hour, but like to pretend that the same minimum... The problem that I have with minimum wage is people make two hugely faulty assumptions about it. One is they assume every worker needs has the same wage, wage requirements. And two, people assume that every country or i'm sorry every state in the country can support the same minimum wage and both of these assumptions are just absolutely absurd um you know is somebody earning seven or i don't even know what the minimum wage is these days fuck it's been a long time since i've worked is, is somebody earning like nine dollars an hour at mcdonald's you know is that bad well if it's a college kid that's working part-time not necessarily. Um, if it's a single mother trying to support a family of three, that's a huge problem, right? But like minimum wage doesn't really address this. You know, we could raise it up to a level to where, you know, like the single parent families are being taken care of, but now every single person that goes to work those jobs that's not that is never getting hired because it's, it's not worth it to hire them. Um, or these jobs just go away completely because they're automated. Um, and then the second part is that like to, pr to pretend that like the, the same rate wage requirement would exist in like the Midwest as it does like on the coast is, is just ridiculous. In Nebraska, I had it like I can find like an OK, like two bedroom apartment for like nine hundred to one thousand dollars a month. And in L.A., like my single apartment is, is like twenty five hundred a month. Um, the idea that there would be like a similar rate wage requirement for either of these places is just unbelievably stupid to me. Um, so yeah, in general, I'm not a big fan of federal, I mean, we can set like a federal floor for like, what's the lowest thing in anywhere in the country. But I think that that should be like a state thing where like states decide like what wages or cities, even what wages need to be, um, paid on a minimum level or more ideally something that's addressed with tax policy. I love taxes. I think taxes are like your fucking taxes are like your fucking surgical tools to target people and then allocate funds to them appropriately. So things like the earned income credit are immensely good um, as opposed to just trying to blanket raise wages in my opinion. All right. Um, our next question comes from Ricker and they want to know, do you think you're going to change your content more in the future now that you're going in going into more in real life politics as in be more friendly to a real life political audience for image um maybe i don't know i have a really hard time being like fake friendly to people um a lot of people just piss me off um and they probably always will uh, i i just so there are times where like um there are times where I try to commit to like, okay, this year I'm going to be nice to everybody, but then I'll inevitably end up in some discussion with somebody that just absolutely fucking pisses me off and then I, that fuck all that. So yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Okay. Um, and kind of staying on that topic, um, what was the most important lesson you learned from canvassing in Georgia, broadly speaking? What was the most political lesson? Um, important lesson. 
um, important lesson. All of the lessons that I learned related to that were just kind of like business related. So I don't know if like, um, but like organizational skills, um, I guess vetting employees better before you hire them, um, how to communicate with potential customers slash employees slash volunteers. Um, all the lessons that I took from that were kind of like business related. I mean, if anybody wants, we can do like, we can do like small business management later, I guess. If somebody, if somebody wants to know where that, it was all related to that kind of shit, yeah. All right, um, our next question comes from Cringe, and they ask, would you consider yourself a neoliberal? If not, what separates you from that ideology? I hate political labels. Um, I, as soon as somebody gives themselves a political label, I think they spend more time arguing what they aren't rather than what they are. Uh, people on the left tend to call me a neoliberal, um, and they tend to use it in a very derogatory manner um, because they have very one-dimensional and stupid views on foreign policy. Um, and then people on the right tend to call me a sock dem, um, and I don't know how they use, actually, they usually just call me a socialist. So I, I don't know. I, like all the online, like communities have destroyed all political labels. It's impossible to know what anybody is when they identify themselves something. Like if somebody calls themselves a neoliberal online, they could either mean that they are somebody that like supports like tax policies and is a capitalist, but like largely supports like redistribution of wealth and all sorts of stuff like that. Or they could be like a fucking war hawk, insane, like laissez-faire market person. So I, I don't know. All right. Um, our next question comes from Southwest, and they want to know: Has the Industrial Revolution and its consequences been a disaster for the human race? Um, I mean, there's a multitude of things you could go into there. Um, I think that there's two huge there's two huge things that we can go into. One, um, actually, both of these are pretty intangible. But the the, the one I would say would be climate change, um, industrialization, and the massive amounts of CO two that we spew now are probably leading us on a path towards um, are probably leading us on a path towards bad climate stuff. If we haven't already started to experience the effects of that, um, we kind of like the different, you know, weather patterns and everything we've experienced. Although people always argue about how much of that is attributable to climate change. Um, so, so that's a big one is climate change. Um, the second thing, I don't know if I would blend this on industrialization or capitalism or consumerism, um, or, or what, but it seems like we're getting farther and farther removed from how we kind of used to originally live as like hunter gatherers. And it feels like, uh, like our huge bend towards like consumerism and the need to like buy products and, you know, acquire goods and shit in order to feel better about ourselves and to give us meaning and purpose in life seems to make a lot of people really fucking miserable. Um, which I think is kind of sad. Now, how much of this is like attributable to like industrialization? I'm, I'm not sure that's hard to say, but yeah. All right. Um, our next question comes from Farrett. They want to know, do you believe welfare should be abolished in favor of private charity? Um, I mean, no. And in a, in a world where private charity was done like in an entirely equitable manner, where everybody cared about all other people and we had better ways of making sure that people got what they needed, then I, I guess I'd be okay. But I mean, we're probably pretty far removed from that world. So I don't think I'd be okay with that. Okay, um, and our next question comes from the same user, Farrit, and they also want to know, is exploitation of the worker an outdated concept, concept from the 1800s, or is it still relevant today? Um, it's, it, if people are saying exploitation of the worker as though, like, the idea that, like, all labor is, or, or all, um, all profits earned from any capital owner is exploitation by, because they're scraping the excess from the labor, that, that concept is just unbelievably fucking stupid. Um, but in terms of, like, can labor be exploited in a more general sense, like, outside of, like, the labor value theory, then yeah, of course. Um, and that's something that probably sh is important to take note of and pay attention to. Okay. Um, our next question comes from Suka Red, and they want to know, Liberal is becoming more of an insult every day. How do you push back against this? Um, I don't know. It's annoying as fuck. Now when people call me a liberal as an insult, I don't know if it's some dipshit fucking lefty or if it's some fucking like, alt-righter. I have no idea anymore. It's annoying. Um, I, I think that one thing that if you want to take solace in anything, it's that, so like right now that the phase that we're, we're already in actually is kind of like it's sexy and popular to be like a socialist slash communist online. Like this is like the new aesthetic is a bunch of like insanely fucking well Wealthy people that are so rich they have to hide their incomes from you on Patreon um, in order to pretend that they're like you um, while they masquerade as fucking socialists or whatever. Um, if, if there's any consolation, my guess is going to be that these people will last like less time than the centrists slash like um, skeptics because these guys eat each other alive like fucking crazy. So whether they all end their careers on like sexually assault accusationing themselves or whether they all argue over who's more left or pure enough or blah blah blah, like I feel like they're not going to last as long as the other side because the 
amount of like purity testing is like fucking unbelievable. It's funny watching like both ends of the political spectrum have like fucking ran off the tracks in the United States to where you've got like people on the left like Jimmy Dore um, or, or Kyle Kalinske. Um, these people on, on at least online are like shitting all over like fucking AOC and Bernie for not being left enough. Um, and then you've got like all of the ex Trump fans that were like even started to attack Trump because Trump like wasn't right enough because Trump didn't defend them during the inauguration um, when, when, or not the inauguration um, during the Capitol protest that Trump didn't like uh, ex uh, pardon any of them. So I mean like both ends of the political spectrum have ran like super fucking hard off the tracks. Uh, it'll be interesting to see who like comes back first because I guess those people will have the, the most power um, as they reunite with their other political bodies that they uh, separated from. But yeah. You know. Damn. All right. Um, and on that, um, you said about being uh, about rich socialists online. Um, Wait, hold on. Can I say something okay. real quickly? Hold on. Yeah. So, sorry. Hold on. I have to do this real quick because I see every time I bring this topic up, there's always some dumb fuck that thinks he's super clever by posting that same uh, comic saying, oh, curious, you participate in a society, you live in it, blah, blah, blah. And they think that they're making like a really good point. So the reason why you would say that like, oh, well, if you're a socialist, like that doesn't necessarily mean you have to live by your ideals is because when people say that, they're talking about like fucking like bricklayers that are making like $15,000 a year. Those are the people that can't afford to live by socialist ideals because they're not only like a part of the system, they are literally enslaved to the system and are being actively destroyed by the system. It's so funny because Republicans have all these poor, stupid, white, redneck fucks around here like defending these like racist ideas to defend like capitalist owners and shit and they're tools like poor white people are tools of wealthy republicans however you poor dumb fuck people on the left are just as much tools by the rich fucking socialists online that do nothing with their money to live any of their ideals as well like you've got these people online now on the left like f people like sean and jen that make two videos a year that are collecting over ten thousand quid a month um, on their fucking patreon for doing no fucking work or these other big left-leaning content creators that are making well over seven figures a year year that do nothing with their money to help their cause right and what's their excuse like oh well i live in a society dude motherfucker you don't live in a society you thrive in the society okay you are at the top okay you're on the upper echelon you are the one percent earner okay you cannot use the excuse well i live in a society so of course i'm just like no motherfucker you have so much money do something with it if you truly really believe these ideas if these are really something that you feel so strong about that you will fucking turn your stream on every day to talk to it, if you expect to mobilize your audience and believing about it but you're not going to do anything yourself what the fuck is wrong with you no fuck that shit you can't use that like oh well just because just because i'm a socialist doesn't mean i can't have money sure but you better fucking do something with it because if you just sit there and invest it or sit in and do fuck all with it what's the difference between you and a fucking capitalist like congratulations you've got a youtube channel you scream at other people to act like socialists when you can't even do it when you have the financial means available for you to do so fuck that shit put your money where your mouth is or shut the fuck up or at least acknowledge that most of the people that you follow that call themselves leftists or socialists are worthless fucking grifters that when the revolution comes they're going to be sitting behind their fucking white suburban like gates to their neighborhoods just like all other fucking conservative friends would all right that's all i'm saying sorry what's the next question <laughs> um our next question is from rel and they ask should a private company have the authority to exclude certain races sexes or other groups from entering a store i think the concept of protected classes is very important um a lot of people like to use the like well the free market will sort itself out but i mean if that was true then slavery and racism and redlining would have never been a thing ever <laughs> um like we would have noticed because the free market would have always sorted itself out um i i just i don't buy that idea that um that you couldn't have like a racist city or town that just never ever has black people or certain races or creeds of people ever going into their stores. Like, I think that kind of thing would happen. So I, I think that I think that the concept of protected classes is good. And I think I support the concept of protected classes. Um, and, and I would want to see those abolished, yeah. Okay, um, and moving on from that, Z wants to know, is Snowden a traitor or a hero in your eyes? Hold on one second. Um... Um, is Snowden a traitor or a hero? Uh, yeah, that's the question. Um, man, I, dude, I don't know. I go back and forth on this one so much. I, I, honest to God, if I would have like a really good opinion on this, I would need to do like a deep dive into how Snowden leaked shit. Like my initial understanding is that like when Snowden started leaking stuff, he did it in a fairly responsible, like highly redacted manner so that names and shit were being released. Um, like the opposite of say like Chelsea Manning. Uh, but then I've heard people contradict this take that like, okay, well he got a bunch of state secrets and immediately ran to Russia. But then I've heard people counter, well like, well if he didn't go to Russia, the US would have found him somewhere else and killed him. I, I, I don't know, man. My, I'm like, I'm 50-50 on Snowden. I hate Assange. I hate Chelsea Manning. But I, my, on Snowden, I'm like 50-50 still. I could easily be pushed either way um i just haven't spent a lot of time like digging into it 
All right. Um, our next question comes from Hashtag. They want to know, do you think the sanctions on Russia have been beneficial or damaging to political relations and what should be done about them in the future? Um, man, I don't Having a less adversarial position towards Russia would be cool, but I don't know enough about what goes on behind the scenes to know if that's possible or not. Um, I like the idea of, I, I think right now I'm a fan of like the idea of attacking Russia via like making friends in proxy ways, like doing proxy diplomacy instead of proxy wars is something I'm a fan of. Um, so for instance, um, like Biden, I think Iran agreed to rejoin the, that joint comprehensive plan of action, the, the, the Iranian nuclear deal. So like stuff like that, I'm a huge fan of making friends with people around the world like that to undermine kind of Russian influence. But I don't know if Russia or the United States right now has an interest in working together because both see themselves as like trying to lead like the world, I guess, with the U S currently being on top. That's my understanding, but that's a, I'm pretty sure that's, I'm sure that's a really complicated question that goes like to the heart of like the, the initiatives that both countries have in terms of like foreign policy. All right. Um, our next question comes from Sushi, and they want to know, what do you feel about Biden's foreign policy, broadly speaking? Um, there was a huge op-ed that we read. Was it on the Wall Street Journal? Somebody might link it in each other. There's a huge op-ed we read a while ago, and I really liked most of his foreign policy takes. Um, he seemed to have a much more measured response to things um, in terms of like, being intelligent about how to approach relationships with other countries rather than just war or sanctions. It seemed like the, like the, the truly the most reddest pill take on like foreign policy is the way to be strong is to just have lots of friends and to have like very high relations with, with like most other countries in the world. Um, I, I think that that kind of stuff is, is important. And I, and I like that idea in concept. Um, now, in terms of in practice, I guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Like I've heard the U.S. is supposedly like recognizing Guido as the leader of um, as the leader of Venezuela as opposed to um, Maduro. I don't know how I feel about that. I, I you know, I, I mentioned that I was a little bit not sure about this. And I see people argue in my chat about whether or not like the Venezuelan elections were good or bad. I, I, and I, I just haven't done enough digging into that. But I, I guess we'll kind of see. I, I mean, people talk a lot when it comes to foreign policy. It's hard to see what actually happens um you know like didn't obama say he wanted to shut down um guantanamo bay for like eight years and it never happened for reasons so yeah i don't know well i guess we'll just have to see how he acts yeah all right um and bringing it kind of closer back to home blip wants to know if you lived in new york city would you vote for andrew yang for mayor um i'd have to see who else is running I'm generally not a fan of people that are like are single issue people. So like Yang and his like, I don't want to say fervent obsession with like um, UBI is not something that necessarily gets me super excited. I'm not like a huge like UBI fan. Um, it's possible that Yang's other policies might be good, but I think they need tunnel vision is really hard on like automation and the threat of automation. Like I think people have been scared about capital becoming too productive since like the 1800s. Like. Pretty sure in Capital, even Marx talks about like the, the threat of like um, like the sewing looms or whatever, like getting rid of all jobs and being in a post scarce society where there's no labor available. And it seems like that hasn't happened yet. So. Okay, um, and kind of on that, uh, Lil Bill wants to know: Will Yang be a good mayor? Do you think? I have no idea. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. Um, our next question comes from Z. They want to know. Should Bernie be criticized for voting against the Patriot Act in 2001? Should Bernie be criticized for voting against the Patriot Act? Um, I guess it depends on how you feel about the expansion of state surveillance. <laughs> um, I, I think that generally, I'm not usually a fan of giving our three-letter agencies like unlimited access to all of our lives and authority and everything. I, but I guess it depends on where you fall, like how liberal you are or whatever. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, just for the people in Twitch chat, if you want to come ask questions, we're at discord.gg slash blue politics uh, if you're enjoying the content so far. Um, but that being said, we'll move into the next question. Um, next question comes from Farit, and they want to know, do you support a trade embargo on China? I don't really think trade embargoes do much for us. I just don't think it's a good way to move forward. Um, it hurts our economy for what? Um, if you like, if you really want to take like a based approach to trade, you need to like engage more in multilateral trade agreements. Like that's like the, that's like the way forward. The, this obsession thinking that we can like just trade war everybody and win that way, I think is just really immature and really stupid. 
Okay. Um, our next question comes from Rido. They want to know, do you have any aspirations to be able to campaign in a broader political context than the extremely online internet culture you're contained in? Um, like helping other people campaign? Yes. Running for office myself? Fuck no. Um, but yeah, I mean, like right now, um, the, the, right now the current political project I have is we have like picked like a candidate that we really like for mayor in my home city of Omaha, Nebraska. And now I'm like, kind of like focused all of my efforts on trying to get this guy elected is like my current goal. Um, and if I'm able to do that, that would be really, it'd be like the biggest thing I've accomplished in my entire career. So that's my, that's my current project. Um, and then if that works, then I don't know, we'll see from there. But I, my, I myself, I don't think I would ever run for office. I like streaming too much. There's not enough money in being a public figure. Like, fuck all that shit. Yeah. All right. Um, our next question comes from Z. They want to know, should all people be gi given a UBI to put them above the poverty line? Should enough people be given UBI to put above? I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm super interested in seeing, like, the, the, the empirical data on UBI, uh, but I just haven't yet. Um, I, it's, obviously it's really hard to study something that no country is willing to implement. There have been some smaller scale experiments with it where it seemed like it's been pretty positive. Um, but yeah, I don't know. That's all we're talking. That's a lot of money. So I don't know like where we're getting that back out of taxes are going up or if some or if the federal government has some way of like recollecting, recapturing all of that or what. But. Okay. Um, our next question comes from Electron. They want to know, what ideology do you think will be most dominant in 100 years' time? I don't, know, I don't know. I don't know what technology will be here in 100 years' time. We might all be fucking alien food by then. I have no idea. Okay. Um, oh, I hope next. that the next thing... I hope Because we've done a lot of shit with computers. We've done a lot of shit with spaceships. I hope that the next thing that we're able to do is like really explore biology related stuff. I hope that with like that, I hope there's like a huge like resurgence or uptick in that. That would be really cool. Cause there's like a whole bunch of shit. Like we still don't know very much about like almost anything related to human biology. Like all of it is so complicated and like interconnected that all of it is like still like kind of mysterious to us. Um, especially like neurochemistry stuff, like brain related stuff. Um, I, I hope that we like make big strides in that. And, there, and there's still like so many diseases that we haven't figured out either, right? Like exponentially like increasing our computer processing capabilities has been unbelievable. Like cell phones and shit are crazy, but people still die of like prostate cancer and stuff. Um, I think it would be really, really cool if there was like a huge push or, or if we started to make huge strides in our understanding of biology. Um, not to take away from what we have done because i know that we have made strides there but bigger strides yeah uh would you consider yourself a transhumanist um is transhumanist the people that think you can put your mind into machines or whatever um i i guess you could probably put it like that yeah <laughs> um no i saw that colt on cowboy bebop i'm not falling into that trap <laughs> um realistically um, I, I don't know i don't have a strong opinion i don't care if we could do it i guess it sounds interesting but okay um, our next question comes from Farrit. Um, should there be no minimum wage? Um, hmm. If there was no minimum wage, then that change would have to come alongside a radical revamping of our tax policy. So, like, I'm not, like, ideologically married to the idea of the minimum wage, but you can't just get rid of it and not change some other part of the system. Like, some other part of the system would have to be pretty dramatically changed. Um, because it seems like we've increased the minimum wage time and time again, and we haven't suffered any of the, like, deleterious effects that a lot of people seem to argue about. Even in Seattle, where they had a big bump, like, people are still going back and forth, publishing study and response and study and response to over whether or not that actually harmed workers or not. Um, so, yeah, the, I, I don't know. It, if we got rid of the minimum wage, like, I'm not, like, super married to the idea, but that would have to come with, like, a radical revamping of our tax system to, like, target people that need money and, and distribute it to them somehow. Right. Um, our next question comes from Mr. J. Mooples. They want to know, is it reasonable for a person to give up on being politically informed? Um, yeah, I can totally understand why people would. There's so much shit to sort through. Um... I can understand the frustration. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. I, the, the, the saddest thing is that, like, <clears throat> as companies grow and money is made and all of us become more kind of, like, unified as a people, um, I think that we are more tuned into, like, national and, inter and international issues. But the things that really matter when it comes to making big differences around the country are local issues, and nobody cares about those anymore. Like, nobody really pays attention to them or gives them any time. And so, yeah, if you were, were going to be informed on anything, the best thing to be informed on would probably be, like, your local issues. But nobody really cares about those, um, unfortunately. So, yeah, if, if you're going to spend any time, like, getting informed on something, make it, like, whatever's going on locally. 
All right. Um, our next question comes from Adlem, and they want to know, do you think that China will face any meaningful repercussions for their situation with the Uyghurs? No. Um, not unless the rest of the world gets its act together and stops acting so fucking scared and hiding from each other. Okay. Um, our next question comes from Z. They want to know, should there be a 99% tax rate after 1 billion in income? Um, I don't think anybody makes 1 billion in income. I'm going to assume that they're talking about, like, capital gains as well. Um, I, you know, I'm just not really... The idea of, like, deleting billionaires from society is just not high on my priority list. I, I think that when people do that, I think that you have a really toxic view of how politics or fiscal policy should work more specifically. Like, when, when, I, when you think of, like, fiscal policy... It should be, here are the programs I want to fund, and then this is how much money I need to raise to fund them. Um, the obsession of, like, we need to get rid of billionaires, and we, no one should make this much money. Like, who cares who makes so much money? What should matter is, is here is a program we need to fund, and we need to raise this much revenue to fund it. And then if that, if that ends up making it so that there are no more billionaires, then okay, that's fine. But the idea of, like, eliminating billionaires for the sake of eliminating billionaires is really silly, in my opinion. Okay, um, our next question comes from Timeless. They want to know, what in your opinion, what is your opinion on socialists and far left people being the only people that have caused beneficial change in society, such as the weekend and lower working hours? I, I wanted to do like a big dive into this on stream. I don't think that's true. Um, a lot of these changes came as a result of like a lot of different people. Like, I think that the weekend thing, I think that there was a group, uh, it wasn't basket weavers. It was like a relatively small union that pushed for that as part of the negotiations for their job. And then I think like, I think Henry Ford decided to give his workers weekends off. Like this has been like an effort from lots of society. This, this is like a really common meme, but, but people always want to co-op history where it's like, oh, well the only good things that have ever happened in, in all of fucking labor history have come from fucking Marxists. So I was like, I don't think that's true. Um, I think that's a little bit of a simplification of everything that happened. Um, that being said, like, I think that there are positive things that left-leaning people push for. And I think that like strength and unions and whatnot are really important things that we could look at in the United States. All right. Um, our next question also, comes from Also, real quick, also, a lot of these same things that did immensely positive things in the United States also did immensely negative things as well. Um, unions and how strong unions were in U.S. history ha have given us a lot of great things related to labor. They were also incredibly fucking racist. <laughs> and labor unions would oftentimes use their labor union power to enact racism against minorities. Even though lefties say unions would fix like fucking racism and blah, blah, blah. A lot of unions like explicitly instilled hierarchies and shit in order to... Um, in, in order to continue to enact racism against other members in, in the union. Um, for instance, in, in, like in the 60s and 70s, when unions started to become more integrated, one of the ways that labor unions would fuck over minorities is they'd say, okay, cool, well, everybody can work any job and any, and you know everybody can be equal and that's fine. However, we're gonna reserve higher jobs for people that have worked lower jobs, like in higher positions for longer periods of time, like exclusively basically ensuring that only white people would be getting into those higher positions, right? It took the power of the federal government stepping in to end a lot of the racism that was being enforced on the union level. Um, sorry, just, so just to be clear, like unions have been awesome in a lot of parts of the United States, but unions have also done really shitty things too. Um, unions are not the answer to everything, um, and unions on their own or lefty policies on their own will not fix every problem that we have in society, despite how much a lot of online lefties like to try to convince you otherwise. Okay, um, and before we move on, uh, we've been going for about an hour now. Are you still good to take more questions? Yeah, go for it. Okay, excellent. Um, our next question comes from Mentally Ill Lona, and they want to know, what is a good indicator that someone has lived a fulfilling life? Um, I think how happy you are at the end of it. Um, I think that people, I think that people, <clears throat> I think that happiness is something that a lot of us aren't really taught to, like, go after. Um, I think that we're kind of given the answers to life and we don't realize that you kind of have to figure a lot of that out on your own. I think that's why a lot of people hit like these, especially millennials now are hitting these, this burnout in their thirties. Actually, a lot of people hit it way earlier where they're working certain jobs because they were told that once they graduated high school, they need to go to college. And once they graduate college, they need to get certain jobs. And they realize like, Oh shit, like, you know, this doesn't make me very happy. Um, and I, like the different types of lives that people live are all are like very interesting to me. Like my ex-wife, um, has always worked like kind of shitty service jobs. Um, and that's it but she's like lived all over the country because she just packs her stuff up, she moves, and she goes like on an international trip once per year. And she does this with the, with the money that she saves like working in service, like that's it. She like makes tips, she saves the money, and then like once a year she goes to like Thailand or some shit. But then I'll know other people that are earning like low six figures and everything that seem like, like oh my God, like this person is way more fucking successful. Um, but they're like fucking miserable. They hate their lives, they hate their jobs, they hate where they live, they hate the lack of mobility, they can't move anywhere, they hate that they don't have any time off. 
Um, so yeah, I think that people make really big mistakes in terms of judging, you know, like how happy people are in life. Um, I, I think that, but we also enforce that on ourselves on like a really super unrelated note. Like, um, I was reading through a lot of threads on like a certain subreddit yesterday that they like to shit on my uh, fiance a lot. And, um, one thing that I read a lot is like, people will talk about like, Oh, like how, how good is this person doing in life? Well, this person seems like a dumb fuck. Like this person doesn't have like a college degree like this person, blah, 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 blah. But when people stop to think about how good somebody's doing in life, they never stop and ask the question like, is this person happy? Because then they'll compare these people to other people who like do have college degrees or people that are doing really well financially or whatever. But like, they seem to have like a lot more problems related to stress or related to their like mental well being or related to their happiness or anxiety. And it's like, damn, like people's ideas, the way that we judge success, I think in society, at least in the Western world today is really fucking toxic, um, which is something I think more people should pay attention to. Okay. Um, our next question comes from Yo Mama, Yo Mama. And uh, they want to know, do you think that ignorance is bliss? Yeah, I think it can be, of course. Okay. Um, now, now, something and... that this is uh, my takeaway from a very big mushroom trip. Um, something that I learned is um, I think that knowledge is never good in and of itself. I think we assume that, but knowledge is only good insofar as you can use it and apply it to make your life better. Um, there are a whole bunch of things you can learn that will make you unhappy that don't benefit you at all. And the idea that knowledge is in and of, in and of itself like very good to have without like any like real life application is a very immature and very silly idea. And I say that having believed that up until I was around 30 years old. So I don't mean like only young dipshits, but like I thought this until I was 30, unironically that like, oh, well just knowledge in and of itself is positive. Like the more knowledge, the better. But I don't think that's true. I think that learning things insofar as you can apply them to your life to increase your happiness, that's like the value of knowledge. So like when people say ignorance is bliss, like, you know, it, you could be informed of every fucking issue and like black pilled and red pilled and blue pilled on every fucking political issue. But if all that does is make you miserable all day or just makes you fight with people all day on Twitter and at the end of the day, you're not really getting anything done or accomplishing anything. Like, well, what the fuck have you gained? What the fuck is the point of that knowledge like you'd be better off just like reading about harry potter fan fiction if that makes you happier you know like you might look down on other people and it's funny like some of the only ways be, be like i think that people don't realize this but like sometimes knowledge is so worthless the only way we can make that knowledge worth something is to make fun of other people for not having it and it's like okay well like good job like you know about like shit going on you know in this part of the world or blah 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 like well what do you gain from this like well what do you know about it and it's like well i don't know anything but i'm not any worse off for it like i don't give a fuck now i say this as somebody that argues online politics all day but um, i mean i don't let it make me miserable oh. all right um our next question comes from dk they want to know why do you think leftists leftists fail so much on economics why do leftists what fail so much on economics oh well the problem is that like marx like the, the book capital is like a giant critique of capitalism and so marxism kind of like spawns off this like idea of like critiquing capitalism but a lot of modern day lefties don't understand the critiques of capitalism or capitalism itself so so i don't i don't know I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the average lefty thinks when they like so confidently will like get up and start talking like economic policy. And it's like very fucking obvious that they have absolutely no fucking idea what the fuck they're talking about insofar as anything goes. I, I don't, I don't know where that brazen, like, um, I, that attitude comes from. I, I don't know. When I get online, I get really scared sometimes. I'm going to say a lot of dumb shit that's not going to make sense or whatever. Like, this is something I'm, I'm very worried about a lot. I mean, I do it all the time. I give takes that are like, oh, fuck, I was totally fucking wrong on this, or this is something I just, I totally missed this, or I misrepresented this, or like, I fucked this up. But like, a lot of lefties will very confidently come out and like argue. They don't even understand, like, they're, like, here's something. Over half of all lefty content creators, I'm confident of this, and I'm not saying fans, I'm saying the actual people you watch cannot explain to you, like, the labor value theory. They wouldn't be able to do it. And if they can, if they can stumble through like some haphazard explanation of what LVT is, they're not going to comprehend it. And if they, if they're able to trick you into thinking, they if you ask them a basic question like, oh, well, like, um, what do you think about like the transformation problem? They'll just give you like a dead stare because they have absolutely no fucking idea what you're talking about. So like, how could you possibly? And then like, if you ask them like basic things about like neoclassical economics, or if you ask them basic things about like our current underst like, understanding of how economics works, they can't answer any of those questions as well. Like, how are you critiquing a system when you don't understand the system or any of the critiques that Itself, or any of the critiques of the critiques like people are just dumb as fuck i don't know but that's just true of like everybody on the left and right online politics like i don't know it's just fucking stupid okay and uh staying on that kind of topic good faith annie pie cap i'm probably mispronouncing that wants to know 
I understand why you have problems with many impragmatic lefties, but what, if any, problems would you have with socialism in the sense of workers owning the means of production, considering that workers would be the ones who share the risks and responsibilities of the business and that we have functioning co-ops? Um, I don't have any problems with co-ops. If co-ops work, I think that's awesome. Um, and it seems like a good idea on its face, I think. Um, my biggest question about like a socialist society is, so I guess here's my question. You can answer this or maybe someone to change. Who decides who does what work in a socialist society? Like, let's say we get into an area where we don't have enough doctors, or we don't have enough computer engineers, or we don't have anybody that wants to be janitors. Like, how do you decide who does what work? And be careful because you can't say like profit incentive or we'll pay them more because obviously like depending on how far left you go like these don't exist like so like this guy in chat like i would love to hear this guy in a conversation because they always like never have so this guy in chat t timeless says the workers decide what they'll work well what do you do when nobody decides they want to work at like the water treatment plant or what do you do when nobody decides they want to be security at like a nuclear power plant or what do you do when nobody wants to be like a fucking you know like back-end data analysts like what do you do when you run out of jobs when you run out of people for those jobs like all right um our next question comes from blip they want to know do you support a wall street tax like the one that bernie sanders proposed my understanding is that right now i think most economic economists think that ftt's financial transaction taxes are usually bad ways to do things they like heavily discourage like market activity um and they're just all around they're not effective at raising revenue because that type of activity decreases substantially once the tax is implemented okay um our next question is from probably tim uh, they want to know, does it concern you that politics in America is increasingly hostile? Should we try to be less hostile, or is there good reason to be hostile in modern politics? Um, yeah, I think it's really bad. Um, hopefully this changes over time. Like, Biden has tried to do it, right? Like, Biden is hard. If Biden can't do it, because Biden has taken, like, the most, like, hardcore, like, unity stance possible, right? With this, like, okay, well, I'm the president of all Americans, not just Republicans or Democrats, and, like, we're going to work together and blah, blah, blah. Like, if, if that type of rhetoric, I guess, doesn't work, I don't, I don't know. Like, it seems like he's trying really hard to do it, so we'll see if he's successful or not. Okay. Um, our next question comes from Brave Wait, Soldier. Wait, what is this? Oh. What is the answer to this? And market socialism... Oh, market socialism. Never mind. Market socialism is like... I like it... Okay, I hope Vosh isn't in my chat. I love market socialism because market socialists are like, okay, listen, I want to be a socialist, but I understand that markets are real and I can't actually make anything with socialism work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be in favor of capitalism where everybody is a co-op and I'm going to call that market socialism. That seems to be my understanding of what market socialism is. Like, when you have socialism and the, like, the, the, the means of production... Or, or, or I'm sorry, like your motor production still like heavily relies on like a profit incentive. Um, I, like I'm pretty sure that Marx himself described that as the workers like literally taking advantage of themselves. Um, that that it, as long as like profit is the motive, it's still like necessarily evil or something. Although I guess maybe you don't believe that, but like I don't know. Market socialism to me just sounds like capitalism with a whole bunch of co-ops, which I'm not really opposed to. If people want to do that, that's fine. But yeah, but co-ops themselves uh, I don't think are technically socialist. But okay, go. Sounds kind of based to me. <laughs> um, our next question brave so for, is from Brave Soldier, and they want to know, what advice would you give to someone trying to get a better grasp on politics? Don't. Um, I don't know. Um, I, I, I don't know. You just have to like start reading a whole bunch of stupid shit, and I don't know. Read article. Here's, here's one piece of advice. If you actually read through an entire article, like past the headline, you're going to be more informed than like 99% of people talking about it on the internet, and then more informed than like 85% of political commentators. Because most people that you listen to on YouTube, um, like Kyle Kalinske or these other types, don't actually read the... They don't even read the articles. They just give you like Twitter headlines and shit about the articles. So that, that's my piece of advice. Read the whole article, and you'll be like surprisingly informed compared to other people. All right. Um, our next question comes from Lumax. They want to know, what are your general opinions on democracy? Do you think it has failed because of the election of people like Trump, or is it salvageable through education? Um, I don't know, man. Democracy is only as good as, as its population, and we seem to be fucking up pretty hardcore right now. Um, ask me that in 20 years, um, and we'll see if you have to ask me that like on the internet, or if we're going to be talking in some fucking hut somewhere as everything burns the fuck down. Uh, we'll see. Okay, um, our next question comes from Baz. They want to know, what is your opinion on gene editing and how should it be used exclusively for medical reasons or should aesthetics, or should aesthetic uses 
uses be allowed as well. Sorry. I would have to think long and hard about that. I'm not sure. Um, I would have to think really hard about that because aesthetics would be a thing. It would. It would have to because because anything that becomes available for purchase becomes like fucking monetized and consumerized and shit. Um, on it's. The, the common argument given in response would be that like, oh, well, aesthetically, that'd be scary because you get like a fucking society that would all look the same. But I mean, we already kind of do that anyway with like our clothes and fashion. Um, and we already also kind of do that as well with things like plastic surgery and stuff, too. Like, so like if you're going to allow people to do like plastic surgery, should we shouldn't we allow people to just edit jeans? Like, I don't know. I would have to think like really hard about that. That's a that's a hard one. All right. Um, our next question comes from B-Bus. They want to know, how do you feel about a fully automated communism? Um, if you could make it work, it would be based as fuck, I guess. Right. Um, our next question is from TKR. They want to know, do you think that affirmative action should ensure representation in government jobs civil ser and civil services? I mean, if you're going to have it anywhere, it seems like the government would be the place to start, right? Okay. Um, our next question is from Doom Doll, and they want to know, how do you feel about the disappearances of billionaires in China? Um, seems pretty weird, man. Uh, I, I'm typically, I don't like disappearing anybody, um, but that's just me, I guess, my crazy liberalism there. Uh, okay, and our next question comes from Santino. They want to know, what do you think about the Huawei ban? Do you think it was based on IT security concerns or Trump's anti-China rhetoric? Um, I mean, when and both. Um, I, I, I mean, I, I think that there probably are legitimate concerns about China's ability to gather information about people in the United States. Um, and then I'm sure that there is a lot of anti-Chinese rhetoric from Trump's side as well that played into that too. So, yeah, I mean, it could be a little, it could be both there. Okay. Um, uh, another question comes from Spatial. They want to know, in another AMA you did, you mentioned that you believed ordinary people can enact change in the government and that corporations don't actually have total control as compared to what other leftists believe. What makes you think this? Um, this is, so this is an idea over the past year and a half that I've been like very, like changed my mind, like radically on, um, it seems to me that like, we have this idea that government is like totally under bought and paid for by corporations and shit. But like, um, there are a couple of like very basic questions. I think that kind of challenge that assertion. The first one is like, what are all these radically crazy policies that corporations are pushing onto us that the entire population doesn't like? Um, no one has an answer to that. Like there, th it doesn't exist. Um, and it's funny, like I notice that there are a lot of very common fictions that are spread on the internet that like don't like stand up to a few incredibly basic questions. Um, so like this idea that corporations are writing policy, like the reality is, is that like corporations probably back politicians that are backing policies that like most of the pol like most of the population is already kind of on board with anyway. Um, the idea that people have like. Um, all of these things that we want government to change, but government's just not doing it because of like evil corporations. Um, yeah, I just, I don't see that playing out anywhere, um, ever. Um, <clears throat> there's that, um, there's that. And then there's the idea that like, when you do find a mismatch of public opinion versus like actual policies enacted sometimes, or, or all the time actually, I think that that change, I think that that difference can actually be explained more succinct, succinctly by looking at the actual voting population. So when we look at like police enforcement of like marijuana crimes, for instance, right? Well, the reason why, um, you know, like, these aren't getting fixed and we'd expect them to is because generally like when it comes to local elections which are the most important things to vote in if it comes to police stuff the people voting are usually like older wider affluent like voters and these people don't give a fuck much about like criminal justice because they're not getting arrested right an 80 year old dude or a 70 year old you know like white you know upper class voter isn't gonna give a fuck about like three strike laws this guy's not getting arrested you know for smoking weed outside of his fucking high school um yeah Okay, um, our next question comes from Lil Bill. They want to know, is Subway bread actually cake? Is Subway bread actually cake? No, that's too radical. <laughs> okay, um, our next question is from Jodeci. They want to know, who do you believe will be the left-wing candidate in the 2024 primaries, and do you think the Democratic Party will abandon left-wing policy like universal health care if there is not a Bernie-like figure forcing them to adopt the position? Um, well, I mean, it didn't take a Bernie-like figure to get us, you know, the, um, not the AMA, the ACA. 
Um, I, I think that we'll probably continue to move left on it as long as the electorate does. Um, yeah, I don't think you need like a Bernie to push those types of healthcare things. Also, I think okay. that the, the idea of like um, like single payer healthcare um, or any type of universal healthcare is popular enough now that we'll continue to see pushes for it. Um, it's not like that's just going to go away. All right. Um, our next question comes from One Life TX3, and they want to know. In your experience, what has been the best way to de-radicalize somebody from believing in the JQ? Um, I, I don't have experience de-radicalizing people away from the JQ, so I don't know. My forms of like quote-unquote de-radicalization have usually just been like when I make certain Nazis look stupid online, their followers get uncomfortable and they start following me instead. That's like been my way of doing it. But like realistically, like if I had friends in real life that were like starting to fall under the JQ shit, I don't know what like the silver bullet is. I just as an aside, people seem to ask me these questions all the time. Like, oh, like my mom believes this thing or my dad is pro this. Like, how do I like, I don't know. Like my parents are, are completely antithetical to my entire like political perspective like my parents are ride or die trumples um like both believe the election so like i, I don't know i don't have like the silver bullet to to bring people over to your side on any of these issues i, okay. I wish i did but yeah <laughs> um our next question comes from dio and they want to know how long do you think it would realis realistically take for the implement implementation of medicare for all um, I mean, if I don't know, wasn't it Bernie's plan over like four years or two years or something? Um, it just depends on how long it's written out for. If they're just asking, like, once you have the policy enacted as law, how long would it take to implement it? I, I don't know. It just depends on how aggressive your plan is, right? Right. Um, our next question is from Ethan Easy. They want to know Is happiness our highest value? Uh, I would argue it is, yes. All right. Um, and then, the question from the same user. Um, you don't have to answer this one if you don't want to. How happy are you on a scale of 1 to 10? Um, I'm a very happy person, and for whatever reason, I always have been. So I'd say like 9 or 10. Nice. Um, our next question comes from Ferret. They want to know, do you think banks should be bailed out if they fail? Um, depends on the bank and it depends on the activity, but generally, yeah, probably. It's better than like letting our entire financial system collapse. All right. Um, next question comes from Morse Code, and they ask, what's the best way someone can de-radicalize lefties, particularly Maoists? How can you get them to like social democracy, especially in a borderline third world country like the Philippines? I, I don't know. I don't have like the I, I don't have those answers. I just don't. I wish I did. But like people always ask me, like, how do I de radical? I don't know. I don't have if I if I knew that or if anybody knew that, then everybody would be doing it. But there, I don't think there was like an easy answer to any question like this ever. All right. Um, our next question comes from Rorotan. They want to know, should the USA have a totalitarian totalitarian ally like Saudi Arabia from a moral perspective and alternatively from a pragmatic perspective? Yeah, the more allies, the better always. 100%. I mean, okay. we and also we should probably, but that doesn't mean we can't pressure our allies into changing the way that they behave on things as well, but yeah. Okay. Um, our next question comes from Dell, and they ask, do you think lib the Libertarian slash Green Party slash insert any other third party candidate should be allowed to take part in the presidential debates alongside Democrats and Republicans? Um, I mean, as long as they meet whatever vote threshold they need to, then yeah, sure. Okay. Um, our next question comes from Whiskey. They ask, what are your thoughts on quantitative easing and the FED engaging in monetary policy? What are my thoughts on the Fed engaging in monetary policy? I mean, I think the Fed should engage in monetary policy. It's literally the Fed's job. I don't. Is this like a libertarian asking, like, should we abolish the Fed? Or is that that's kind of what this sounds like? I, I mean, I think that central banking has probably been pretty good for the world and maintaining the stability of the like world's monetary supply. I think for the most part, the Fed does like a decent job. Um, they, they or it feels like it. They've done a decent job at like curbing unemployment and inflation as much as the Fed could be expected to. Um, what, what do I think about QE, like, specifically? Like, I, I don't know, like, macroeconomics is, like, fucking witchcraft. And I'm pretty sure even macroeconomists, like, agree with that. So I, I, don't, I don't have any... I'm not going to sit here and, like, pretend that I have, like, a very nuanced or strong opinion or, or like, well-informed opinion on, like, macroeconomics in general. That shit is weird as fuck. All right. Um, our next question comes from Hashtag. They want to know, how would you want to deal with the issue of politici politicization of scientific issues such as climate change, mask usage, and meat intake? 
Um, I have no idea. I don't know. I, I just stop, <laughs> stop politicizing like scientific fact or descriptive reality. Um, I, I don't know how you stop that. Yeah. All right. Um, our next question comes from cool tot and they want to know, do you have any opinions or knowledge on modern monetary theory? Um, no, I don't. It's, most of the people that talk about it seem pretty meme. I don't care about it much. Um, I, 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 I my, I, my understanding is that like most like new economists like incorporate all of the reasonable claims of MMT in current economic models. You don't need MMT to explain anything. Um, and then MMT only exists um, so that like incredibly radical people online can talk about like infinite spending with no consequence or, or whatever other crazy shit they want to talk about. I don't know. I don't know strong opinions. I don't think about it much. Okay. Um, our next question is from Pseudo Intellectual. They want to know, should we decrease the interest rate of our economy as it is right now or increase it? The interest rate? Are they talking about like the, the Fed? Uh, the question just says the interest rate of our economy. I guess they're talking about the Fed. Isn't the interest rate already like at or near zero? I, I, I don't know. Should that be decreased more? Like, ne Are they asking if we should do negative interest rates or... I don't think I have I'm a good answer to this one. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. That's all right. Um, our next question comes from Farit. They want to know waffles or pancakes, or is the choice of waffles or pancakes stupid? Um, I think that waffles are the more based option, but pancakes are more reasonable. You can't have waffles every day, okay? But you could have pancakes every day. Okay. Um, our next question is from Z. They want to know should privacy be an explicit explicit right in the Constitution? <sighs> A right to privacy. Um, I, I don't know. I guess like what kind of privacy? Yeah, it's a bit of an open-ended question. Sorry about that. Um, our next question yeah, is I think from Mag. Gen generally, I think in the U.S., I think usually less privacy is considered better in terms of like what you want for rights. Like you don't want the government having like private trials. And, and like convicting people in like private rooms like you want all that to be like open to the public so I, yeah i guess i just i don't understand what they mean necessarily by privacy okay um our next question comes from mag they want to know do you regret defending kyle rittenhouse last summer and do you have any worries that it will come back to bite you when you when you are trying to work with democrats to organize future campuses um i don't think i defended rittenhouse i think i just i defend property rights and i defend people's like um i defend people's like right to self-defense and in that case i still stand by everything i said um i've attacked rittenhouse multiple times i think it's really dumb <laughs> i would never drive across um like drive over to like another area to go and defend somebody else's fucking but i think that's stupid as fuck and i generally don't think it's probably worth it um to risk like your life especially for somebody else's business but like if people want to if you want to defend their property against would-be like destroyers like i mean i support people's rights to do that always all right um our next question is from mike escape they want to know would you rather fight a lion or a cheetah probably a cheetah i guess um our next question is from lil bill they want to know do you think the capital riot will lead to a patriot act 2.0 hopefully not but we'll see um and our next question is from probably tim and they ask what is your dream car um and like the price a uh, dream car i don't even know for the i was thinking of like one of those like gtrs or like the audi r8s seemed like really cool and that like that big kind of up there in the price range but i in terms of dream car i don't know i'm not sure i haven't thought about it much right now i live in la and the fucking roads here are horrible and every time you pull out of a gas station even in my car like my bumper like scrapes across the fucking street so fuck this place i don't know where you would drive nice cars at <laughs> uh okay so our next question is from whiskey they want to know what is your ideal way to reform the two-party system i don't think two-party systems are necessarily that bad i think that people freak the fuck out about our two-party system i don't think changing our two-party system would fix any of the problems that people seem to think it would fix um i think if you wanted to like like for something to like meet those people in the middle i think it'd be cool to get rid of first past the post if you wanted to see like um like third parties become like a little bit more um vibrant or, or if you wanted to see more life in third parties i think getting rid of first pass supposed to be a good idea but like i'm the obsession of like getting rid of a two-party system like i don't know i don't really care that much about it like i think that there's like a pretty wide amount of um diversity of opinion like within the parties right now if you look at the primary cycles i think you see like pretty extreme differences in, in a lot of the candidates so yeah, i don't know i don't see that 
I don't see us like being like, oh god, like we need a third party to represent this issue. Like, I don't know, it just doesn't seem to be the case to me right now. Right. Um, our next question is from Raven Wolf. They want to know which, if any, discussion that you've had online has been most influential in shaping your beliefs today. Have any made you change your mind entirely on a specific subject? Um, I've had arguments that have kind of like slowly shifted my opinion on like Citizens United. I used to think that was just like a horrible, evil thing, and now I think I'm generally in favor of it. Um. Fuck. Well, I'm sure there are other issues too. I just can't think of them right now off the top of my head. Oh, I guess like the idea that like corporations like control our political shit or whatever is something I used to believe a lot, but now I've like slowly changed on that. Like I, I don't know. Fuck. I don't keep track of everything that I've um. I don't keep track of like all of my opinions that have changed over time. Those are the two biggest ones I can think of though. All right. Um. Our next question is from Java Bolt. They want to know: Do you think killing a pregnant woman should count as a double homicide? Um, maybe yeah probably right oh. I guess like if you're killing somebody that somebody else doesn't want killed at the very least right I think that's fucked up uh, um, our next question is from Batman Nerd they want to know what would you recommend for someone who is interested in ph ph philosophy to start learning how would you go about learning about more complex topics I don't know, go to the plato.stanford.edu and just start fucking reading. That's where that, that wiki is, right? that's where I get all my info from. Okay, um, our next question is from Forehead. They ask, what are your thoughts on idealism? The idea that ideas shape history compared to materialism, which is the idea that material conditions shape history. Um, sounds like something that a lot of people way smarter than me have written a lot about. I don't have a strong opinion on it. Um, and... Well, you've just said you don't have a strong opinion on it, but the second part of this question says, to what extent do you accept idealism as it seems to be a core tenet of liberalism? Um, you know what? I just don't fucking know, so <laughs> I can't say. Sorry. Fair enough. Not well enough um, to that, yeah, sorry. Our next question is from Electron. They want to know, how would you suggest a person try to identify themselves ideologically if with tests, then which tests would you suggest? I don't know. I don't know what the obsession is with like belonging to like a political group. Or I guess I understand humans like want to group themselves. I don't know. I don't. I just don't give a fuck. Um, yeah, I don't know. I like if I want to find out somebody's position on something, I just ask them, "What is your position on this thing?" The the obsession of like what political party, blah blah blah. Like, I don't know. I just I don't care that much. I, I don't. I think people get obsessed a little bit about that too much too. All right. Um, our next question is from Dio. They want to know. Is a Cold War between China and the U.S. inevitable, or has it already started? Is a Cold War inevitable? I don't know. I mean, I fuck. We are, we're always in Cold War. I just finished Metal Gear Solid 2, so maybe we're infinitely in Cold War. Um, I don't know. I, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. All right. Um, our next question is from Espresso. They want to know, do you believe the executive orders done by Biden is the opposite of unity, reversing all of the orders of Trump? Um, I think some of them were like pretty important and on some things like there's just right or wrong answers Like I'm pretty sure like one of the orders is like mandating like masks to be worn on federal property Like I don't I'm not interested in looking for unity on that issue Like this is like a right or wrong thing and if you disagree then I don't really care um, Yeah, I, like I, I don't know I, I think that for the most part I think Biden has done a good job at trying to be like pretty um, Bipartisan uh, like I think it was his press secretary um, That w when people were like, oh, like do you think that Biden isn't focusing enough on like bipartisan issues? And I think her response, you know, like oh, don't you think opening schools or don't you think keeping America safe? Are these bipartisan issues like protecting businesses? So yeah, I don't know. But we'll see give him more than two days We'll see how it goes. Ask him in a couple weeks All right um, Our next question comes from the great filter. They want to know in light of your announcement that you'll be aiding a candidate running for mayor of Nebraska, what is your advice for people who wish to begin participating in local politics? I don't know, get a few friends together and then see if you can get more and more and more people and then organize like canvassing groups and stuff. I think you'll be surprised at the audience you can get with politicians, with local politicians that'll like listen to you and give you the time of day. Okay. Um, our next question is from Quit That Stalin and they want to know, Seeing how a lot of people are asking about Vorsch, what are your thoughts on anarchism? Cringe. But uh, Vorsch okay. is cool. Okay. Um, our next question is from Blip. They want to know, how do you think Joe Manchin will vote on certain policies from Joe Biden's agenda? 
um, as any, as you'd expect, a very moderate Dem 2 vote. You probably vote in agreement with the Democratic Party most of the time, and you might break on like the more extreme issues that they take up. Okay. Um, Mike Escape wants to know, what are your thoughts on Cyberpunk 2077? Haven't played it yet. Ask me in a couple of weeks, and I'll have more thoughts on it. All right. Um, Atelex wants to know, uh, I think you kind of answered this earlier, actually, but it's slightly worded different. Um, they want to know, what is the most significant significant instance of you having changed your mind on a topic, and what was the flaw in the previous way you were thinking about that topic? Um, it was Citizens United. The existence of Super PAC seemed bad, but the biggest flaw is I didn't consider the other end. Like, okay, well, let's say that we make it illegal to advertise. <sighs> For like political related, related stuff um, before elections, you know, like, well, what would that look like? Does that mean that I'm not allowed to advertise? Like, let's say I want to make a documentary and advertise it, you know, like 30 days before an election about climate change. Am I now banned from doing that because that would be considered like election interference? Um, yeah. Okay. Um, I think we're actually coming to the end here because we do seem to be running out of questions. Wait. Okay. Um, also, hold on. Sorry, because I just read dumb things. Yep. Science disagrees with you. Not all life is valuable, but yes, life begins at conception. Science does not define what life is. That's a question of philosophy. These are philosophical questions. A lot of people make this mistake where they take definitions from certain like rigorous scientific disciplines, and then they pretend that those definitions came from those rigorous scientific disciplines. Philosophy precedes, philosophical questions precede all forms of categorization. You can't categorize things without first engaging in philosophy. Those things don't come from science. There is no scientific analysis that you can conduct on any life form ever that will say like, oh, look, this is alive. I know because biology told me. No, wrong. It's because you made the philosophical quandary of asking like, well, what is life? Oh, well, life is when something, you know, like processes energy or, you know, changes over time or reproduces. Like these are philosophical questions. These aren't answered by biology. These are given. And then you work with these. These become part of your framework of how you approach these scientific disciplines. But the constraints construction of that framework is a philosophical question. Science can never answer the question of when does life begin, because that question is very squarely a philosophical one. Sorry. Okay. All right. Um, our next question is from Southwest. They want to know, what is your position on the British Union of BDIs, and do you agree with their mission statement to light together in Britain a flame that the ages shall not extinguish? I have no fucking idea what any of that means or what it is, so I can't say. <laughs> okay. Um, our next question is from Dude Nar. They want to know, have you ever considered playing Destiny the game? I tried to once, but I just didn't care that much about it. Maybe in the future, we'll see. Okay. Um, our next question is from Jado the, Th the Thread. They want to know, what do you think is the biggest issue facing America right now? Um, I mean, right now it's the coronavirus related stuff for sure. Um, and then after that, it will be, this is very broad, but like the economy. Um, yeah. All right. Um, our next question is from Pac. They want to know, how do you think on your feet so well? Have you always been into the bait? And what did you do before streaming? Um, honestly, most of what people see is like thinking my feet. It's usually just, I've heard the question before and I've had a lot of time to think about something before I answer the question. So like what, what comes across is like, oh, like you think really well on your feet. It's like, well, no, this is just an answer I've given like 30 times before. And I'm like slightly reforming it to fit like this particular context. So. Yeah, most of it is just practice. Um, like, you have to consider that, like, what you do for work eight hours a day, you can probably do very well. And this is just what I do for eight hours every day. Like, I talk all the time on my stream. So I should be, like, pretty decent at it, I think. I've been lucky enough to be able to do this for a long time. So. Okay. Um, our next question is from Denuve. They want to know, how do you go about finding true information in a sort of third world country with huge media blackout? I have no fucking idea. I don't know. I've never lived in a third world country or been in a media blackout country, so I have no fucking idea. Okay. Um, Ricker wants to know, do you think there's a pattern of lefty radicalization in places such as LGBT communities online usually? And if so, why do you think I this don't is? know, but it does seem to be the case online. Like LGBT communities, sex worker communities, um, there seems to be like, in order to even be in these communities, you have to be like extremely fucking like hardcore left in like a cringe way. Like you're a socialist, not like you're just like very, you know, like left leaning or whatever. You have to be like a socialist or whatever to make it. I don't know why. It's really cringe to me. Hopefully that changes going forward, but. Okay. Um, our next question also comes from Bricker, and they ask, would you ever talk to Hakim, or is the lefty arc over? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking I'd still talk to anybody who wants to talk. 
All right. Um, our next question leading from that is from a telex, and they want to know, what is your understanding of worker cooperatives and their performance relative to traditional firms in terms of produ productivity or working conditions? Uh, I've seen like so much mixed stuff. I don't have a strong opinion on them. Like co-ops apparently work better in some industries than others for reasons I don't fully understand. But like, yeah, I, I don't have like any strong like pulls towards like um, like worker co-ops or like capital owned firms or whatever. Like if co-ops work, if co-ops and capital firms, capital owned firms like function similarly in terms of productivity, I'd probably tend towards the co-ops because it would be a better way of distrib redistributing wealth like in a natural manner rather than an unnatural manner, right? Like if there was only one firm in the United States and that firm had a billionaire at the top and I could either choose to tax all of his earnings and then give it to the lower class people or if I could just choose that like all the people had like an equal share in the company and they all got the earnings naturally like i'd probably tend towards the latter it seems like a more efficient way to allocate income in society maybe um so yeah like whatever works works i don't care if co-ops work then yeah fucking aim into co-ops like and i think there's even things we could probably do better in society to encourage co-ops to see if they work better right Pre preferential business loans and whatnot from banks on it so yeah okay um, our next question comes from Brave Soldier. Uh, now, you briefly mentioned earlier that you thought the greatest threat facing America was uh, the economy and COVID-19. Um, but Brave Soldier asks, don't you think misinformation is the most dangerous threat to America and the world? Well, yeah, sure. I would agree with that. But I, but I don't think other people agree, and I don't know how the government could go about addressing that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would say misinformation. That's actually true, yeah. But uh, I was thinking more in terms of like, oh, like what can the president or what can our legislators do? And I don't know what they can do about misinformation, unfortunately. Okay. Um, Farrit wants to know, what is your favorite video game? Um, I'm probably just going to give a nostalgic answer and say Final Fantasy VII. Nice Final one. Fantasy VII, the original, not, not, not whatever came out a year or two ago, whatever that was. Yeah. Kingdom Hearts um, 3 remake or whatever. Yeah, Jesus, sorry. <laughs> It's all right. Um, our next question is from Fluffy. They want to know, what is your opinion on nations binding themselves together through a union similar to the EU? Based as fuck. Strength in numbers. Okay. Um, our next question is from Timeless. They want to know, what is your opinion on the industrial workers of the world? Um, I don't know enough. Is that like a labor union or organization or something? I don't know enough about it to have an opinion. Okay. Um... Dio wants to know, what is the best drama on Twitch right now? Um, We're in kind of a drama drought right now. There's not much cool shit. The meta hasn't lent itself well over the past few game cycles. The Among Us drama was all very fucking boring. Just like, oh god, that guy was me, that guy playing. The Rust drama was very fucking boring. Um, there was a drama that I was involved in with Bob and everything. That was, I thought that was pretty boring. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, don't, I just, I don't think there's like very much good drama. We need another game to come out that is good, a good drama machine because everything right now sucks. All right. Um, our next question comes from Provo Letariat and they want to know, do you think hate, spe hate speech laws will be introduced in the Biden-Harris administration? Um, I don't know. I hope not. That'd be pretty scary, but I don't know. Okay. Um, our next question is from Wingman Merlin, and they want to know, should all drugs be legal and in a regulated marketplace? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, our next question comes from Wes Lazy, and they want to know, how exactly would you say the government plays a role in society? <laughs> I don't know how I'm supposed to say it. I mean, the government plays every role. In, I mean, the government can determine your public transport, the repair, repar the reparations, the, the repaired state of your roads. Like, they determine, like, schooling, like, your tax policy, like, what jobs exist, like, how corporations are regulated. I, I, don't, I don't know how to answer that question. It's by doing All things. Right. Yeah, it's how they determine its role in society, I guess. Okay. Um, our next question is from Doom Doll, and they want to know... Do you think more countries, such as Germany, Japan, or South Korea, should get nukes? Um, I would have to think a lot more on this, I'm not sure. I've heard arguments in both ways, that nuclear weapons ensure like a form of peace, basically, because as countries acquire nukes, they become less fuckable with. Um, but then I've heard, obviously, the more countries that have nukes, the higher the likelihood you have of some kind of nuclear altercation, which is obviously not good. Um, so yeah, yeah, I don't know. I lean towards thinking. My gut feeling is that probably the less nukes, the better. Is my gut feeling, but I, I don't know. I could be wrong on that. Okay. 
Um, our next question is from Mike Escape, and they want to know, do you think it was excessive that Tehran players in StarCraft 2 were rooting against each other for, for favorable balance patches? I, I don't know. I'm not sure. Every, the, we don't, race realism is probably less contentious than balance issues in, of the races in StarCraft, so um, I'll leave that one alone for now. That's not the, this isn't the appropriate form to discuss that. All right. Um, our next question comes from Kate, and they want to know, how big of a role do you believe that religion plays in politics in the United States? It's probably still quite a large one, especially for older people, but I mean, the role of religion is going to diminish as time goes on, I think, as newer generations are kind of like less and less hardcore religious. Okay. Um, our next question is from Wingman Merlin, and they ask, what is your opinion of the U United States' involvement in the Syrian civil war? Are our actions justified in aiding religious extremists? Um, man, I should have like a comprehensive opinion on this. I think my, my gut right now is that we probably shouldn't have been involved at all. It's like, that's my, my gut. I think that my feeling is that America saw it as a convenient opportunity to get rid of Assad um, because of his like kind of loyalism to Putin. Um, I feel like we probably shouldn't have been involved in that at all. Yeah, I, I think I'm gonna. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with that. But that, yeah, foreign policy is really, really, really hard. Okay. Um, our next question is from Skull Candy. They want to know how come you don't look more into Germany as a source for U.S. alternatives, as they are also a federal democracy. I mean, I I would, I guess. What do you mean? Like, like Germany does like education and healthcare better than the United States does at the very least. All right. Um, our next question is from Farrit. They want to know, what is your opinion on JREG? Um, he seems like a funny guy. I don't know what his actual political opinions are, so maybe my opinions on him would change if I knew. <laughs> but based on everything I've seen, he seems like a cool dude. Yeah, I don't think anyone knows anything about his opinions. Mm -hmm. um, next is from Kate, and they want to know, do you believe that the US presidential system is preferable to the UK's parliament parliamentary system, and why or why not? Um, I, I think so. I like our I like the idea of our bicameral legislature. Um, I, I, <laughs> I've had birds try to explain to me why the House of Lords maybe isn't the worst thing in the world. I think it's incredibly fucking stupid. Um, but supposedly they don't have that much political power anyway. Um, I, I don't know. I, did, I would have to have like a thorough understanding of both systems to like truly compare and contrast the two. And honestly, I just don't know the UK's like well enough to say. I, I, I like the US's system and I, yeah, I, I, I'll go with that. I'll leave it there. I, I, don't, I, don't think I, I don't think I know enough about the British system to like have like a deeply nuanced take of like how I feel about it compared to the US one. Okay. Um, our next question is from Pac. They want to know, will you ever be partnered with Twitch again? Or have they given you any update on returning? Um, Twitch doesn't communicate with me at all, so no update at all. Um, whether or not I would return or not, I'm not entarily sure. I'd have to think about it a lot. Um, because, um, yeah, streaming to YouTube has been fun. All right. Um, our next question is from Jodeci, and they want to know, how do you feel about the original Black Panther Party, and should its political prisoners be pardoned by the Biden-Harris administration? Mm, it would depend on what they were arrested for, I guess. If it was for, like, bombing and shit, I probably am not in favor of that. But if it was just, like, politically related issues, then I probably would be in favor of that. But I don't know why the ones that were imprisoned were originally imprisoned. Okay. Um, and what are your thoughts on the Black Panther Party? Um... Uh, my understanding today is that the Black Panthers of today are far different than the Black Panthers of the past. That the Black Panthers, like, in their founding or whatever, were mainly, like, a civil rights-related group or whatever that thought maybe violent means were necessary to do it. But today, that like, the mission has changed quite a bit. So I, I don't know. I, don't have a, I haven't, like, read enough on, on what they do or their activities or, or whatever to have a strong opinion right now on how they exist. Okay. Uh, our next question is from Adbem, and they want to know... What are your three most important changes that you would want for the American school system? Amer fuck, I don't know. For the American school system? I feel like education in the U.S. needs to, like, radically, radically change. I don't know if it would just be, like, three small changes. Like, I mean, in terms of working within the current system, like, smaller class sizes are probably important. Making sure that, like, all students have access to, like, things like technology and stuff is probably important. Um, uh, um... 
yeah that's all i can think of and then like i guess like access to like colleges would be nice like nobody shouldn't be able to go to school just because he can't afford it it's probably like a good idea um yeah um in terms of like radically redesigning it like i'm not sure that i keep wanting to read more i i hear that like different countries around the world try different things of education like is it finland i think that like has like a radically different approach i think and they're like the like number one in the world i think they go back and forth with south korea in terms of like student achievement so i don't know i'd probably just look at whatever they're doing and then copy their ideas all right um, our next question is from Super Curious, and they want to know, do you think pirating media is wrong? And it is a follow-up question to this. Um, I think in general, you probably should avoid it if you can. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's, um, yeah. Sorry. Um, they also ask, what about people proliferating and creating pirated media? Creating pirated media. What do you mean by that? Um, I think they mean to. I think they mean to say something along the lines of creating media that's already been made, um, but for free. Like pirating? Or wait, what does that mean? Uh, I'm not completely sure. Uh, I think the question's worded a bit weirdly. Uh, we'll just move on to the next one. Okay. Um, Dio wants to know when is the next Jesse Lee Peterson interview? I have no idea right now. We'll see. All right. Um, our next question is from Brett, and they want to know, I live in Huntington Beach, California, and found out a couple weeks ago you live here, but in the future are planning on moving back to Nebraska. I also want to move out of here. Can you give me an exp explanation as to why you are leaving and if others should do the same? Um, it just comes down to like where I have the most friends and then where the opportunities are for um, creating content and stuff. Um, my fiance really doesn't like living in Huntington Beach and I know like a lot of streamers that live in Austin So I'll probably moving down there and then financially it makes more sense as well Like California is super fucking high taxes and the uh, cost of living here is very very fucking high too So I'm not 100% sure if it's worth like being here at the moment Okay, um, and then our next question is from Dio and they want to know what is your opinion on r slash livestream fails? Um, it seems like a crazy place crazy people Okay um, our next question is from Skull Candy. They want to know, how do you feel about misinformation and how to combat it going forward um, as it had a significant impact on the latest election? Uh, misinformation is bad and we should combat it going forward. I don't know how, but it's a bad thing. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Obviously, I think it's horrible, but I, I don't know what the solution is going forward. Okay. Um, our next question is from Doom Doll, and they want to know, do you think 3D printing of firearms should be legal? Mm, probably I have a but I guess we'll see how it plays out I mean if people start 3d printing a whole bunch of firearms for like gangs or some shit that'd probably be bad but I mean how do you make something like that illegal I don't know I'm not okay. sure I'd have to think about that a lot I'm not sure all right um, our next question is from Ricker and they want to know should North Korea have nukes um, I'm not a big fan of North Korea personally so I would say no okay um, Kid Corey Dude wants to know, how do you feel about raising children from a faith-based approach? Um, I don't, I'm not a really big fan of religion, so fuck that. Okay. Um, Morse Code wants to know, what is your opinion on lefties saying social democracy on saying social democracy only working when first world countries exploit third world ones? Um, doesn't everybody exploit third world countries? I mean, I'm sure we could make it work without doing it. It would just cost a little bit more, right? Yeah. Um, our next question is from Talos, and they want to know, what are some ways that non-influencers can get more involved in politics? Um, I, like I said earlier, like grab a group of friends and see if you can like volunteer to like canvas or start getting involved locally with your political movements. And if you're like super driven to do it, and if you can get um, a group of friends like with you doing it, I think you can actually get a surprising amount of political influence on a local level by doing so. All right. Um, our next question is from Timeless, and they want to know, do you support boycott and divestment and sanctions against Israel for their neocolonialism towards Palestine? Um, that's a tough issue, bro. Uh, I, Palestine and Israel is like one of the rougher things in terms of like who's on the right or who's on the wrong. Uh, I hope that the United States takes a better approach than just like completely cucking out to Israel in terms of how they deal with it. Um, I guess we'll see under Biden what he wants to do. However, it seems like the majority of the United States and, and then the left and right political parties are like very, very big, like pro-Israel. So yeah, I guess we'll see what happens. All right. 
um, our next question is from Whiskey. They want to know, what do you think about internalizing economic externalities via subsidies or taxation? Do you think there are more effective ways to correct market externalities? Um, I, I feel like that's actually the most effective way of dealing with things. Like I, th I want to fuck. I don't remember this is. I don't remember where I read this article, but I thought recently, um, carbon taxes were like the best, like one of the most effective means at combating the amount of pollution that um, companies are, are creating. So. Finding ways to internalize um, those like negative externalities y using market forces with like government programs or, or like government like uh, penalties and shit seems to be a really effective means of dealing with things. When you when you start to like incentivize or disincentivize things with tax policies or you know penalties, um, I, I think that it seems to be a really positive way to address things. Yeah, from my understanding of what I read about the effectiveness of uh, carbon credits. Okay. Um, our next question is from Fluffy, and they want to know, how do you see China on the world stage? Do you see them as a hostile nation and we should do our best to take down, or do you think we should work on building a friendship with them and coexist? I mean, the friendship would be awesome, but I mean, I don't know. It feels like we would have different ideas on how the world should be ran, so it seems like we're probably going to be um, at ends with each other. I don't know how we work together going forward, but I think adversarial is an okay relationship to have with them. Enemy probably is a little bit too extreme. But friend, I don't know if it works because of how different the two countries approach politics, so I'm not sure. All right. Um, our next question is from Skull Candy. They want to know, trailers or teasers? Which one do you prefer? I think it's probably a teaser. All right. Um, our next question is from Rel, and they want to know, should Congress members be allowed to serve in districts that they don't live in? Hmm... Probably, yeah. I don't like that idea, but I mean, if people vote for them, I mean, it's kind of on them, right? Like, if it, if they want to be represented by a certain thing, like, do you have? Should you tell people, like, no, you're not allowed to vote for that person? I mean, like, if they really want to, I guess. Personally, I think it's kind of dumb, but. All right. Um, our next question is from Kid Corey Dude, and they want to know: Should we change the age to buy alcohol to 18 to match the rest of the world? Um, probably, yeah. It seems a little bit weird that you can do the military shit at 18, but you can't do alcohol stuff. That seems really strange to me. All right. Um, we are coming down to our last five questions now, if that's all right. Um, so our next one comes from Rel, and they want to know, what do you think about slavery slash, slash Jim Crow reparations? Um, I think right now, I think I fall on the side of like, I think cash reparations should probably be paid. It seems like there were promises made to um, African Americans, to ex-slaves that were like walked back on in the US government and we should probably make right on that. So I think uh, right now I'm like pretty warm towards the idea of reparations. Okay. Um, our next question is from Brett. They want to know, do you believe that there is a difference in the quality of living between cities, suburbs, and rural areas? And if so, which environment do you think offers the highest standard of living for middle slash working class people? <sighs> Fuck, I, it depends on what your job is. Like if you're a working class or whatever, but you want to work on a farm or whatever, and, and you're probably living like in a very rural area, right? But if you're middle class and you want to work in the city or working class, but you work in the city, you can probably afford some suburbs. Like that's like such a variable question. It depends on like the cities you're talking about, the suburbs you're talking about, the jobs you're talking about. I, I don't know if I can give like a more specific answer than that. That's like super depends on like the types of jobs you're working and like the type of life you want, you know? Some people really fucking hate suburb life. Some people really fucking like suburb life. Like after living in suburbs for 30 years of my life and now like living in cities, I don't know if I could ever go back to wanting to live in a suburb ever because fuck. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't know. Just that, that's, that's a, yeah, that's a super variable question. Okay, um, so we're down to our last three now. Um, our next one is from what Runaway Feline, and they want to know, even though your ideologies are very leftist, you're always shitting on lefties. Why the factionalism in your political views? Um, lefties make me look worse, and they I, I have to spend all my time like answering for their shitty takes. And then also lefties are just kind of like the loudest group of people right now online. So they're the ones that you have to deal with the most, and then they often give like really dumb and brainless takes about everything too. So it just it's how it ends up being. All right. Um, our second last question is from Sergeant Jelly Bellies, and they want to know, have you considered starting research streams into or debating proponents of QAnon and other conspiracy theories? 
The problem is conspiracy theories require so much time to debunk, and it's usually just not worth it. It's not fun to go into them hardcore. Like, they're usually fringe and not many people believe in it. And then you also, like, people that are conspiracy theorists will oftentimes, like, update the fuck out of their beliefs, too. So they, like, constantly have, like, new, like, conspiracy shit to talk about. Um, so, like, I don't know. I, it's just not a, a topic that I'm that interested in. Fuck that. All right. Um, and our final question comes from Doom Doll, and they want to know... Are you going to take the COVID vaccine or hope that a majority of people take it so that you don't have to? Um, no, I'll get it as soon as it's available to me. Although I'm not like a healthcare worker or anything, so I don't know when that's going to be. But Okay, excellent. So that is all the questions for today. Um, would you like to give a closing statement before we completely wrap up? Um, yeah, wait, why? The Southwest guy said like five times in chat. He's like, he's lucky the mics are muted. Wait, what the fuck does this guy want to ask? Why is he so riled up in chat? Uh, I, I'm not completely sure on that one. Um, we keep all of the users muted apart from the AMA guests and the host, so. Oh, well. Um, okay. Um, sorry. Um, final shout out. Uh, no, thanks for uh, having me and chatting. And um, if you want to watch my stream or my YouTube, I'm twitch.tv slash destiny and um, youtube.com slash destiny. And uh, yeah. Yeah, thank you very much for coming on. Um, for people in the Twitch chat, um, our Discord chat is discord.gg slash blue politics. Um, I hope you've had fun, um, and we'd love to have you on again soon. Yeah, sure. Just let me know, and I usually respond to your emails, and yeah. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. Um, so for everyone else, um, we're going to ask that you go down into the other voice chats, um, but thank you all for coming for your questions. They were really good. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Nice AMA. I enjoyed that. We could move down to politics too if you guys want to discuss like post AMA. Yeah. Whew. Where's that Southwest guy? Oh, the, the, he's here. Okay. Where's the Southwest dude? Where's he at? <laughs> no, on this. That was nice. Dude, get the southwest good. Wait, dude. how long were you guys planning on going? Because it went on for like dude. two hours. Hey, Destiny. Hi. Um, I recently joined this uh, racial social justice union at my school, right? And um, I'm like, I try and organize stuff for my school, but one thing they recently did is they try to mm -hmm. encourage diversity in hiring. Mm -hmm. But um, they, they want to send a letter for the newly hired principal for middle school and primary school. But then they were told there was going to be an internal candidate, and now they're sending more letters. And then it's like there's a new power, power struggle, and teachers are getting sort of angsty about it. What like what what do you even do? Because you can't like you can't put like quotas for who should be hired, but then you want to be able to encourage like different sorts of people for getting hired. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean I think my general view is that like I think affirmative action is like a last ditch effort for greater representation. There are probably other avenues that you should exhaust before that because like and I think that affirmative action is probably at its worst when you're literally like we need to hire X race of people instead of continuing to hire Y race mm -hmm. of people because that's going to lead to like so much fucking resentment and I don't know if anybody wants that like it just seems like it's bad for everybody but yeah yeah by the way Southwest is coming okay. just give him time oh. give him like a minute thanks man oh yeah I want to hear what Southwest has to say yeah I really want to see this does it doesn't even make sense he was like asking like oh he's here times, like... what are we talking about he's here Yo, Southwest. You're, you're muted, by the way, Southwest. <laughs> yeah, can I ask something really quickly? Yeah, uh, it's not my channel. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> so, uh, I uh, a while back I watched a segment from uh, Voss's stream, and, and he was looking at. Uh, a segment from one of your streams where you were like kind of berating this girl uh because she said that she was planning on like reading up on like marks or something belating uh, a girl because she was i was probably giving her a hard time over but i don't think i was like genuinely you were giving shooting. her a really hard time dude was this 
Who was this? Like, Pikachu? Pikachu? Do you know the girl's name? I don't remember, to be honest. But um, I, like, uh, God, one of the things that you said was like, um, Marx isn't relevant at all mm -hmm. to like modern day politics, which was really weird. I, I, I think that if somebody wants to get a start in politics, if their start is reading Marx, you're gonna take like fucking like 12 years of reading before you get into anything that is going to like give you like a good foundation or understanding of like what's going on in today's world. Like at the I very don't... least, you should probably read somebody a little bit more like modern, right? Like Piketty or something, right? Like why the fuck would you start with like, with Capital or something? Like why, like, why not well, read something at least a little bit more updated? I mean, I don't remember if this was like her start in politics per se, but it, I don't know, it at least came across as if you had this uh, disdain for, like, I don't like socialist people. ideas. Yeah, I don't like people that just spend all of their life buried in theory. It comes off as very classist to me, ironically, um, and, and like, it, like, it's a huge waste of time. That's like, fair. I, like, I, I don't but know, like, like, if there are some people that want to do theory, that's fine, but, like, I cringe so fucking hard when, like, somebody's entire life is, like, debating theory online, and they don't have, like, a single strong policy position on literally fucking anything. It's like, what the fuck is the point? True. And then what's sure. more is that when they start attacking other people that are doing real-world Base, base, base. Wait, chill, stop. That's, that's, like, usually, like, my biggest problem, but... So I don't know if this is my fault or yours or whatever, but it, mm -hmm. it, I don't think you make much of a distinction between uh, the kinds of people that you maybe see uh, online that you're talking about and like the ideas themselves. Um, so, like, yeah, sure. I mean, like, I'm sure that there are people that like read Marx that are also like up to date on like current like policy or like yeah. talk policy. Yeah, I'm sure those people exist probably. Yeah. So like. Like as a fellow like um social democrat, like I, I'm I'm surface level familiar with like the the, the leftist um, critiques of capitalism. Mm -hmm. I disagree with most of them. Uh, like when I talk to socialists, the problems that they uh, <laughs> seem to think are like inherent to capitalism, I either disagree are necessarily a problem, or I uh, think could be solved through policy. I don't think it's necessarily um, like inherent, but uh, like I, I have a pretty, I, I have some pretty friendly relationships with a, you know, fair few like um, um, ancoms and 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 yeah, other other various kind of uh, anarcho socialists. So, Hello. Hi. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I've just seen you get really, really, really angry about like. I, socialism. I, I just, I get like... really angry in general when people act like really stupid. Um, and lefties generally online are really stupid. And then I have to like defend like most of their dog shit takes. So just, it gets me like very aggravated. Um, and then they're like okay. the predominant voice right now on YouTube and Twitch um, are like lefties. Like socialism is like the new hip thing to be or whatever. So there's a bunch of these fucking dipshits that are really popular now. And then it's just, yeah, it's just what I have yeah. to deal with. Cause it's just, so, it's, what, it's what I see mostly now. So, okay. That's fair. Last thing. I know I've been talking the mic for a bit. So, um, like, the, the the main sort of socialist that I follow is Vosh. And mm -hmm. I know that you've had, like, a really big sort of um, um, on-off relationship with him. Yeah, Vosh but, is probably like, the socialist left-leaning person that I'm the most friendly with on the internet. But, yeah. Yeah. But we disagree with like, him. <laughs> but, like, as far as his leftist takes goes, as far as his understanding of... Because you were criticizing earlier people's like understanding of the critiques of capitalism of capitalism and the critiques of the critiques and so on mm -hmm. so like as far as that goes with 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 him like uh, would you i think that he generally has a better understanding of like the pros and cons of what he talks about rather than people that pretend that like if we just have more unions every single problem in society including racism and climate change will magically be fixed i think that he generally has like a better uh, a more nuanced take on that than a lot of the cringe lefties you see on twitter and youtube and Twitch. Alright. Sure. By the way. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Funny. Like, tankies Thanks, are, are take up yeah. a lot of left Twitter and class reductionists as not well. Not even, yeah, not even just tankies. Just a lot of lefties in general, unfortunately, get like really dog shit takes on economics or. Alright, hello? Anything. I'm here. I'm unmuted. They unmuted me. Hi. Oh, bro, it's out class. Let's go. Wait, why did you keep. Oh, yeah, wait. Why did you keep saying I'm lucky everybody's mics were muted? Alright. Can you unban me in your Discord? Oh my god. 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 O
asking if I'm okay. just asking if you can. I mean, I don't unban people from my Discord. I don't do any of that shit because when what happens is is people get banned and then the email is like, Destiny, I didn't do anything. I don't know why I got banned. I was like, Oh, I feel bad for you. I unban you. And then my mods will message me like, Hey, this guy was talking about like euthanizing like all Jewish people for like 48 hours. So I like I can't I I don't unban anybody. If you want to get unbanned, go through the unban form. Yeah, I mean, I have, and Mr. Moon just ignores it, so... Well, then it sounds like you proceed. probably did or some really fucked up shit if that's what's going on. No, because I'm not banned in his chat, and I'm, I'm not banned in your chat. Why'd you get banned from I'm Discord? In the Discord. Uh, Turkish-related memes, I mean, if you want to get into that. <laughs> You're gonna have to be a little bit more specific than that. What does Turkish-related memes mean? Armenian genocide. No, 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 okay, so this, this oh, is dear. all that happened. I'll just be completely, <laughs> completely honest, okay? Someone posted a picture of a cockroach, and then I oh. reacted to the picture with the Turkish flag, and then I was perma banned. Uh, okay, I don't know. Well, that, you know what? That sounds like a bad thing. It doesn't sound like a reason to perma ban some of those. So go ahead and send in your ban appeal. And I, man, I trust that the man when they look at that appeal, it's gonna. Okay, be... RTBA, you're listening to this. Southwest four five sixty, get me unbanned. Let's go. Southwest hey. four five sixty. Thank hey, you. Hey, De Destiny, I had a red check Turkey. I had a seven days temporary ban. It was just a temporary oh. ban. Can you unban me? I I don't I don't do bans. I don't do bans on my server. Okay? Please, please. Not the right place, guys. Wait, wait, guys. Everybody in this goddamn fucking Discord. Yeah, guys. This is a server. Can you unban me? This is a server. Can you unban me? This is a server. Can you unban me? From your unban forms. Hi there, Destiny. You were talking earlier about within a socialist government, who decides who gets the jobs. Um. While I think like this uh, system is uh, pretty inefficient, can I just quickly explain to you how it worked within the Soviet Union? Sure. Badly. So, uh, yeah, so, yeah, pretty badly. But uh, basically <laughs> what would happen is you'd go to the, uh, your university, you'd study uh, what your interest would be, and then you would be assigned on your performance at university, and because pretty much everyone was uh, having a degree, um, what you would be doing for the next few years and after that point you could apply for something else uh to do something that's more in your interests but uh you would always have to be had uh have to have a job because uh not having a job was against the law so if you didn't get that job you basically would have to like do something that you so my get. question is what do you, what happens when you get into jobs that like people don't want to do but are kind of necessary for society to be functioning like what do you do like for people that like let's say somebody needs to monitor like a water treatment plant like, what do you do when no one so, wants to uh, do that job? The thing is, a lot of people did want to do those jobs because often the... Okay, wait, real quick. Because worst... so this is... I run into this, and before we run down this road too much, okay? You can't answer every question with, well, society will just take care of it. Because that's about as okay. intelligent as we're saying, like, the free market will solve it, right? Like, but my... I, I, yeah. I was just going to say, basically, those jobs ended up often... The worst jobs that, like, in a capitalist uh, society... Uh, often tends to be better paying with some better uh, things. For example, like a lot of managerial jobs were paid worse than like factory working jobs because the like it was less uh, advantageous to like do it, you know, less fun. So a lot of them would be paid higher and therefore some people would take them. Okay, but now at that point, how are you socialist if you're like using like literally like monetary incentive to get people to work jobs? Yeah, I mean, the, again, the, the U.S. I thought wasn't like an extremely social. I mean, it was the thing is obviously the wage discrepancies aren't ex extremely high. It's not like someone's getting paid a huge amount more. Uh, and I mean, this is again, this is one of the issues of socialism is that people weren't always happy with what they were having, um, and or just didn't feel the need to work harder than they needed to. Um, uh, but there, there, there were like benefits as well that weren't just purely monetary, but like would be in a capitalist society. For example, like. Uh, High-performing workers would get like workers' uh, holidays in like castles across the country and stuff like that. And uh, uh, you would be, if you were a better worker, you'd be more likely to get like a nicer apartment, for example. That that was pretty much it. Like huh. those were benefits. That sounds. Do you think like our current solution in capitalism, where we like just coerce people, uh, yes, coerce the most unfortunate, question. the most unfortunate into doing those bad jobs, or could we just change society? To where either those jobs are uh, much much better to do, or just change other forms of organization in our society. I mean, you can have like regulations that make it so that certain things like shouldn't happen. Like we shouldn't have people going into coal mines and like inhaling dust and dying, right? Like you can s fix some of these things with like like the EPA, for instance. Um, but I mean, like there's always going to be kind of like shitty jobs that nobody really wants to work, right? Like that's going to exist in any society, right? So, um, what do you think? We sh how sh how should we uh, 
designate that in like in your ideal society let the market yeah, yeah, and ironically, I guess like these, it's just market forces for this stuff, right? Like, wait, I was memeing. You can't actually just say that. Wait, why not? <laughs> well, I mean, you can. I was just hoping you would say it. You know. Well, what's your solution? Like the no, fact no, no, is, no, no. is my, yeah. my solution was literally market forces. Because yeah. I, I, well, because I, I, I mean, like, I, you, like, I agree with you personally. Yeah. I don't. I'm not I, a I don't think that like the problem isn't like. I, I think that the most important question that we should address is that like there should be some baseline of existence that is in our country, like, um, like everybody should be able to afford like food and clothes and have like a decent home like and then like probably have healthcare and access to the internet like as long as these baselines are met somehow or provided for somehow like i don't really care if some people earn more money than others like i don't think that's if that important. people if people have that baseline why would they do those base those bad jobs because people still want to earn more i think yeah because people still want to earn more like you're not going to like people ubi really everybody so that they're living in like fucking three bedroom yeah. apartments in new york like high yeah. rises in manhattan yeah so my question for Destiny is, um, you're you're a big market guy, right? And like outside of like healthcare, what are like the like big market failures that you think are existing in the current, uh, like specifically in America, I guess? Uh, I mean, like the term that I'm familiar with is the term externality. So any market that's capable of like moving the negative effects of itself off of that, like where you don't have to pay like an actual like penalty for it. So anything related to pollution, for instance, is like a market failure because markets don't take pollution into account because you don't have to because you, like um, you can pollute infinitely and you don't have to pay a cost for it so like anything related to that is is going to not be taken care of by capitalism um and then probably i mean i'm giving like the very basic like econ 101 answers like anything that yeah, lends yeah. itself to a monopoly is probably not going to be taken care of by capitalism so like you like public like utilities stuff where you have to duplicate like a ton of infrastructure stuff with incredibly high barriers to entry like these types of things probably need to be like either super well regulated or provided for by um you know like governments yeah. Even like positive public externalities like as well is, also yeah. what, really important health is like really an example of like it. positive externalities so like my yeah. question to most of the socialists is like what's the difference like I, like a lot of the time i just hear it's just like market socialism but like i feel like market socialism is just capitalism with extra steps <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, mar oh, markets aren't specific to any idea, to any like ideological yeah. side. Like markets can exist I mean, on any yeah, ideological. No. Wait, side. isn't that not yeah, true though? I thought say. like a huge then, part. Like, of I thought socialism well, was entirely about central planning. Socialism? No, no, uh -oh. no. Uh -oh. What? No. no. Well, like, so, like, well, like, what's the difference between socialism? It's more. Okay. Socialism, it's, 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 okay. socialism is literally the ownership of the means of production by the working class. Democratic socialism, which looks strikingly similar to like uh, Sweden. Old, 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 like, but well, it's sort of many of the Nordic countries. The only difference would just be that all of the corporations uh, are under worker co-ops. That's the only difference. Yeah, like I, mean, I thought that producing, is, I thought is that, like kind of. What? That doesn't sound well, like. I, I thought that producing no. things for a profit motive was considered on. Like, uh, yeah, not good. some. Like there's you, like, like a fringe opinion. Like I, I don't even I don't understand where this comes from. But it's like uh, commodity production, other things that some people apply to socialism. But I think socialism is more about the, just the relation to some to one's work. It, it's not necessarily about like having a market or not. But most oh, most the, socialists don't support. Wasn't market. one of the parts of socialism eliminating the commodity good. form? You're talking about like communism. Well, yeah, yeah. So uh, it's a fast the, big, the big thing what? is uh, a lot of socialists come against like you commodifying needs. But like, would be okay with you oh. doing things that are like in it that for like having a market for like luxury goods. So, Destiny, what is your take on the uh, the riot or insurrection that happened at the Capitol? Um, it's pretty fucking bad. What what more do you mean? Or what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's big. Yeah, no. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> No, I meant like, bro. like, what's the, uh, so do you think there's any broader implications? Like, do you think anything needs to happen to, like, Republicans for this happening? Or do you think, like, this is one-off? It's not one-off. Um, sure. yeah, I don't know. Like I said, like, the problem right now is that we live in totally different realities and everything kind of stems from there. Like, if you were a Republican and you legitimately thought the election was stolen and that, like, all the courts are rigged against you and that, like, the Democrats are, like, stealing your, like, elected leadership, but then I kind of understand why you would want to charge the Capitol and overturn the results. Um, uh, what do you think about uh, Trump's new political party that he's thinking about? I don't think... I, dude, I totally could be wrong, but I've been saying for, like, over a year, I don't think Trump is going to want anything to do with politics once he's gone. I think he's going to leave and he's just going to say, fuck all that shit and then leave. I don't think he's going to start a new party or anything like that, but I, I'm, I could be totally wrong on that, but it doesn't... Do you think, yeah. like... All the Trump media Destiny. talk is bullshit too. All the what? Like, Trump media talk, like he's gonna start like. I don't think so. Like, but he could. Like, 
I mean, like, is it that hard? <laughs> like, with, like, I mean, Parler came up pretty quickly. I mean, <laughs> to start a political party, oh, boy. No, I mean, honestly, honestly, they could take like twenty no percent of the Republican right. Party just f just from them, and that would pretty much force Mitch McConnell. Mm -hmm. And this kind of, I'm, I'm, I. I think Kyle, uh, Kyle Kalinske's opinion on this is kind of right. It's like it, it, uh, if like more uh, of, of this kind of co emerges and more suspicion emerges, like they would just like impeach him entirely. But honestly, if that happens and Trump might just run Mike Pence under it, who knows? I remember when so, you said in the AMA that <laughs> first world countries always exploit third world ones. Then, okay. for example, for the third world people, how do you persuade them to participate in multinational trade deals instead of having like a hardline nationalist approach? I think multinational well, trade deals usually no, don't those multinational trade deals like usually lead to protections for those third world countries that they can negotiate because I think that first world country laborers usually want those protections in place as well because they don't want to keep losing jobs to third world countries being exploited. So or exploited, not exploited, sorry. So for instance, like I know there were a whole bunch of labor reforms that Vietnam was like on the edge of passing in order to join the TPP and a lot of those fell through once the TPP fell through because they no longer had the pressure to do so. Because like if you're an American worker and you're going to sign a multinational trade ag agreement with another country, you don't want like all of the workers in that other country like taking your jobs. You don't want your jobs disappearing to those other countries because you just can't compete. So uh, like, I don't know, it feels like there's an incentivization from both sides to, um, to, to, to kind of have like the labor working decently well in other countries because both native work want their labor power protected and the people in the other country want to push for protections as well. Uh, All right. So, well, hey, hey, now. Also, isn't so, there such a thing I... as like mutual relations between um, the exploiter and the exploitee in some ways? Sure. So I just oh, want to butt in here real quick. Sorry, guys. Uh, Desi, I know you said you got to run. Um, the other day we had uh, an AMA with Dr. David Friedman, the son of Milton Friedman. Okay. And someone asked about it, and he expressed interest in having a, a debate with you on BP. Would you be interested in that? Debate on what? Oh, blue politics. Uh, yeah, he's an anarcho capitalist, so oh, I'm sure God. you can have fun with that. Oh, that would be oh, funny. Um, yeah, if you want to pick, like, if you, if you want to have, like, one particular topic, because it sounds like something I'd have to do a lot of research for, um, then we could, sure. If it was on, like, one particular topic, sure. But, um... Speaking of externalities, would be a good one. Sure, I just... Anything related to anarcho usually makes me suicidal, but, um, I, I, can, <laughs> I can try, yeah. If he wants to, just give me, like, a particular topic and email me, and then I'll, yeah. All right, we'll do. Well, thanks for being here. Yep, thanks for having me, guys. Remember to hit that like and subscribe, and don't forget the notification bell so that my videos show up right in your feed. Hey, no. this is unbanned me. Nope.